are so many firsts, lasts, and in-betweens. We're certainly not the last class to get a smile and a kiss from Bruiser walking across campus. We are never going to be the last class to begin our college careers by serving our local community and pursuing our passions. Above all else, come hell or high water, we will never be the last class to come to Adrian College and find a motivated and supportive community of students, faculty, and staff and lead with the skills and tools needed to be inspiring industry leaders and professionals with high hopes and dreams for our bright futures ahead. The people and the experiences that we are most grateful for are the ones that will continue us on this upward path for the rest of our lives. In the spirit of gratitude, thank you to my fellow classmates for being a part of this community with me. Whether we spent most of these moments together or barely crossed paths, you contributed your gifts and talents to continue the legacy of this incredible community. Thank you for prioritizing the preservation of the Adrian College experience and for continually seeking to develop the institution's ability to develop both the knowledge in our heads and the care in our hearts. Thank you to the roommates, friends, teammates, and peers who, although we have only known each other for four years, it seems impossible to think about being surrounded by anyone else in the coming weeks. We celebrated each other's accomplishments, became each other's biggest cheerleaders, and never let each other struggle alone. College has been called the most formative years of our lives, but I can say for certain that these last four years have included both the most amazing and most difficult moments of my life. One constant, however, is the support of my friends through it all. It is impossible to thank everyone who makes up our AC family. Together, you have each played an integral role in helping us achieve this momentous milestone. And you be proud to be a graduate of Adrian College. It's a good day to be a Bulldog. Thank you, and congratulations to the class of 2023. on the threshold of a magical time in your life, a time of significant growth and introspection, self-awareness, challenge, and opportunity. A time when you will always look back at and say, you know what, those were incredibly special years. Never experienced before I arrived and never replicated after you leave college.
continue to take pride and learn from Asim Han's leadership today. Good afternoon, Bulldog fans, and welcome to Docking Family Stadium, the home of Bulldog football. Ian Went, Calvin Keyes, off of a bye week. It's the Bulldogs, it's the Britons here on the Adrian College Sports Network. All right, Calvin, lots happened since we were on the call in Kalamazoo, a game that did not go Adrian College's way. And uh, what a couple weeks it's been since then. A change at the helm. Coach Jim Deere, longtime coach player assistant with this program he resigned shortly after the game against Kalamazoo Harry Bailey the interim coach for at least the remainder of this season a lot has gone on I'm sure internally with this program and uh, it doesn't get any better right one and six record Albion comes to town a big time rival yeah certainly it's going to be just another tough test for the Bulldogs luckily it feels a little bit like a new and revamped football team Obviously, still some key pieces out of the lineup with Ben Koloski on offense, Donovan McCary on defense. The good news is I've heard whispers that Waitis Ashman could be back in today, which would be a welcome addition on defense as always. And just in general, having um, Coach Harry Bailey take over the reins as interim after uh, being offensive coordinator for the past couple of seasons, and even with the players being able to clear their mind, put some of this season behind them, get some time to rest, recuperate, and refocus heading into this rivalry game. I think we're going to see an improved Adrian football team this afternoon. Yeah, I, I think we will, and we'll know early, Calvin, how inspired this team is exactly. It looks like the league title, the MIAA, out of the question. A winning record also out of the question. Best they can be is 4-6, and six, but they're not thinking about that, right? They're thinking about their rival, Less than two hours away, Albion College, and uh, I can think of nothing better if you're a Briton to just come in here and coach Travis Rundle to really take it to a Bulldog team that's down. It might be a classic David Goliath story here today with Adrian down, Albion up, and uh, they have aspirations to, to maybe still compete for the MIAA title. I have to imagine for Coach Harry Bailey and the Bulldogs, they're, that's the storyline, right? They're the underdog. They have a chance to make a statement and really surprise some people by trying to take down a rival. I think for Albion's head coach, Travis Rundle, I think they're looking to bounce back as well. They've suffered two straight losses against Trine and Hope over the last couple of weeks. And, you know, this is a winnable game for them and for the Britons who are 5-2. and two, They're 1-2 and two in conference play. So this is a really important game for them to try and bounce back and – right the ship moving forward and I think you know the, the big tell will be the first five minutes right Calvin it's how is Adrian going to respond they had a bye week changes within the program yeah you can do everything mentally and uh, get yourself ready for a game like this but it will be all about what they do on the field we'll be back with more of our pregame show after this 60 second timeout. this is Adrian College Bulldog football on the Adrian College Sports Network
the national anthem by the Adrian College Bulldog Marching Band here on Kaepernick Insurance Field, Docking Family Stadium. Hail Adrian, the song as they march off from the field from the 50-yard line down to our right where they will hang out for this afternoon. A 3 o'clock kickoff between the Bulldogs and the Britons. Calvin, I'd like to you know, talk about different players and what they're going to do and what we can expect. It, it's, it could be very different, you know, maybe defensively. Uh, who knows what Coach Harry Bailey will have in store, how many changes he's actually implemented on the field. Uh, but we're just going to start with the quarterbacks, the two guys that have split time this year, Mark Lopez and Brady Raymond, both freshmen. Uh, it's really been – it was Brady Raymond to start the year, struggled, got hurt, in and out of the lineup. Mark Lopez came on, played very well. He's been banged up a couple of times. Uh, these are very young kids. They've learned uh, being thrown right into the fire, and they've, they've had some great moments, and they've had some freshman moments too. Yes, yeah, certainly. You get the feeling it's really Mark Lopez's backfield going into this game. He's been the guy who's been able to bring the biggest level of consistency. He's had some trouble turning the football over in decision-making with when to throw it, when to hold on to it, or throw it away. And one thing that's really positive with him is I think he's been growing in that decision-making Last week didn't uh, throw any interceptions, threw for a touchdown pass, 202 yards. For Brady Raymond, I think he's shown that he's a guy that can really be utilized for the ground game, but his strength is definitely not in the passing game. Look for Harry Bailey to kind of sprinkle him in into the backfield and maybe for some rushing sets to switch things up and keep the Britons on their toes. But I think for the Bulldogs, it's going to be Lopez's backfield. The other guy I'm excited to see on offense, though, Ian, is Tyler Poyer. He looked really good and... Talking to Harry Bailey this week, I think we're going to continue to see him at the running back spot shifting from his normal tight end position. Yeah, and you, we've mentioned Coach Harry Bailey, his first game as head coach here at Adrian College. He's a four-year letterman and two-year starter for Adrian College. He was a senior captain in 2008 and all MIAA first-team linebacker. So Bailey knows exactly what it takes to win here at Adrian College. He is a native, of course, Hudson, uh, the great city out there in the western part of Lenawee County. A lot of Baileys out there, and they know football. They know sports. First time as the head coach here at his alma mater, Harry Bailey. We'll see what a kind of kind of team they are in the early going, right? This is an Albion team that, uh, you know, looking at the numbers, wins, losses, they're good, not great, but they come in with an edge. They feel that they do have the advantage. Adrian, you're playing at home. You like that feel. This team is very much more comfortable at home. It seems like they play better defense when they're in front of these fans here at Docking Family Stadium. And what a perfect day for football weather-wise, Calvin, right? We had clouds early, sun starting to break through. Should be a perfect afternoon for some Bulldog football. Yeah, certainly 53 degrees and partly cloudy here. Lots of sunshine coming down onto the turf surface here at Kapnick Field inside Docking Stadium. And I think that's perfect sports weather. Cool enough that when you start to get a sweat on, um, you don't overheat, and it's just a nice sunny afternoon in general. That it is. Your four Bulldog captains out on the field, Jack Shasela, Randall Broom, Tyler Poyer, and, of course, Shea LaRue, that leadership group that has really had a chance to be leaders. They bring their Bulldogs out onto the field we get a great look at this team running out onto the field at the 50-yard line. The Albion Britons looking across the way at their rival Bulldogs who have their sights set on what would be a big upset here in the MIAA. Not many eyes will be on this game early, but if Adrian can keep this game close, Calvin, I think a lot of people will start tuning in just to see what Adrian is doing against Albion. Yeah, and I think the two biggest changes that Coach Bailey has wanted to implement our togetherness, you know, belief in one another and that they can accomplish things when they're working together towards a common goal. And then the other thing is accountability, holding each other accountable, um, striving for greatness. And when other people are not living up to the expectation, um, challenging them to be a part of what the program is trying to do, that starts here today, Ian. Yeah, well, and Calvin, you had the, uh, the opportunity to talk to Coach Bailey um, on the air on – uh, Wednesday with our weekly conversation with these coaches 
I mean, he, he's a bulldog through and through, right? I mean, we, we mentioned he's been around this program for over a decade as, as coach. He, he, did he give a sense of feeling comfortable uh, in this role? I know he hasn't coached the game, but what would you take away from his demeanor? Yeah, I think he feels comfortable. The one thing that was really emanating off of him was excitement. This has been a dream job for him. Uh, someone from the area who's been a part of this program for so long and being able to be at the helm of this football team is very exciting for him. And you get the feeling he's just excited to give it all he has from, from his standpoint, from a coaching standpoint, and really try to throw the kitchen sink at this Britain's team this afternoon. Yeah, and Albion will take a look at their squad, and uh, it's, it starts and stops with the quarterback, as it always does. Luke Lavelle, number seven for the Britons, a more than capable quarterback in his backfield. He'll have Phillip Jones-Price, and we'll see some James Bloomfield as well. And... I mean, Calvin, it's up to this Bulldog defense who's done some things well at times uh, to really contain those two out of this Britain backfield. The secondary and the linebacking core are the strength of this Adrian football team, but Luke Lavelle's going to test them today. He's thrown for um, nearly 2,000 yards, 1,841 on the season, 15 touchdowns, only thrown two picks. So this guy is talented. Lavelle ready to come in and make an impact. I think... What's interesting is this is going to be a Britain's offense that from the numbers are going to look to throw the football more than run it. Their leading rusher is Phillip Jones-Price. He's got uh, 443 yards on the season, and as you mentioned, they're going to split the load with Curtis Hamilton and James Bloomfield as well. Interesting note. We'll see if it plays out, but uh, looking at the two-deep roster here provided by the Sports Information Department, listed as Adrian's number one running back is number five, not Sal Paterno, it's Tyler Poyer and Calvin. We saw him rush the second half due to, to injury needs last week or a couple weeks ago against Kalamazoo. And uh, Poyer did more than a serviceable job, so uh, maybe some running back and H back out of number five. Yeah, positive sign to see uh, Excuse me, Tyler Poyer first on the two deep. He had 11 carries for 70 yards in the second half alone last week. Be interested to see if we see T.J. Moore. I know he suffered an injury two weeks ago, but he was dynamite with 123 yards on the ground. So if they can get him healthy, that would be great. It's looking like Sal Paterno's RB2 today, though. We're going to pause 10 seconds for our network stations to identify themselves. This is Bulldog Football on the Adrian College Sports Network. We're back here at Docking Family Stadium. Bulldogs will kick off first to the rival Britons from Albion. Ball on the tee is Jack Boyke. He's a sophomore. Ball will be placed right in the middle of those hash marks on the Adrian College 35. Britons are back deep. Bulldogs set to kick off. And we welcome you once again to the campus of Adrian College. Ian Wentz and Calvin Keyes alongside for these longtime rivals. Boyke sends it into the sky. And it will be a returnable kick back to the Albion College 7, bringing it up to the 20. Room to the 25, 30, 35, spinning at the 40. Some nice field position for the Britons as bringing that back is Delvin Friendly Bell, the sophomore wide receiver. That's about a 40-yard, a 30-some yard return for Albion and some very good field position for the Britons. Yeah, Albion already, we can see it. They have some explosive talent at the skill position. Friendly Bell is... Been good for them this year with 247 yards receiving. You see the explosiveness from him. The main guy I think we're going to have to watch out for is the receiver, number five, Kyle Bristow, 606 yards and 10 touchdowns with 43 catches this year. He's a deep threat for certain. Albion spreads him out wide, two to a side. Laval, the quarterback, takes, throws to the flat, caught at the 40, to the 45, 48, 50 inside the Bulldog territory. That's Phillip Jones Price. That should be enough for an Albion College first and 10 as they move the chains on the quick pass. It's a simple play call, but it hinges on the blocking there from the receiving core for Albion. They did a really good job of getting out in front of their receiver and opening up space for him. First and 10, Albion. It's going to be a quick pass off to the left side. It's going to be deeper into Bulldog territory. Not quite a first down as number two makes the catch, Robinson. 
And that's a gain of six. They're already to the Bulldog 40. And Calvin, we see early this Albion offense allergic to the huddle, at least early on. Three receivers right, one to the left for Lavelle. Running back to his left. Opening drive of this game. Tight end comes in motion, gives off into the middle, trying to run into that Bulldog defense. Bounces it out off a tackler, first down Britons. He's inside the Bulldog 30 to the 27 yard line. That's enough for an Albion College first down and Jones Price bounces off the first tackler, makes some good yardage. Certainly, Jones Price able to get a gain. You wonder if Albion saw the success Kalamazoo had with the no huddle offense two weeks ago and they're looking to go with a similar strategy. Lavalle's quarterback for the Brits. He is a junior looking right, now throws middle reception made and tackled right away about two yards shy of the line to gain. Is number five, Kai Bristow, senior wide receiver. We have our first third down. Or rather, this will be a second down and short. Britons have yet to see a third down in this drive. They're already to the Bulldog 20. It's a second and three. Two minutes into this game. And the Albion quarterback takes, gives, middle. And it's going to be a rush for an Albion College. First down, a five-yard run for Philip Jones-Price. Jones-Price, a guy they're going to rely on heavily in this football game. It's nice to see them mix it up and, and take the ball up the gut instead of looking to the outside, keeping this Bulldog defense on their toes. Opening drive of the game, Lavelle, the Albion quarterback, stands in the gun with Jones-Price to his left. Claps his hands, run fake, throws left, caught by the tight end, to the 15, 10, lowers the shoulder at the 5. Flag on the play as number 80 makes the catch. Nick Christian, and we will check this flag. It's out there in the wide receiver cornerback area. As the near side officials confer. To give the call to our head referee who will make the announcement to the fans here at Adrian College. Holding is the call on Fridley Bell, the sophomore wide receiver. So wipe away the good gainer for the Albion tight end on our first penalty of the afternoon goes against the Britons offense. So Albion facing their first adversity of the day here being placed behind the sticks at first and 16 in the Adrian red zone. Philip Jones Price is the back behind Lavelle who stands in front of him in the pistol. Lavelle turns, gives Jones Price room right side, lowers the shoulder and he's tackled after about a six or seven yard rush. A couple of Bulldogs make the tackle. Looked like one of the Ganap brothers in on the play, the Bulldog tight end, or the Bulldog linebacker. Second and nine for the Britons offense. Fast paced offense at the Adrian College 19, second down and nine. Laval takes his hands, claps them together, gives off to his running back, Bryce, or he looks for the end zone, dives to the pylon, and he is in for the Albion touchdown. Philip Jones Price from 14 yards away on a second and nine, scores the opening drive touchdown and it's Albion six and Adrian nothing. What a drive from the Britons. Just clinical, you see the outside run and just out hustling the Bulldogs in the open field on a lot of these play calls. I think that was nine plays, moving the ball 60 yards, getting in for the score. Can't think of a better start if you're an Albion football fan. The Albion kicker lining up for the extra point. And the lefty puts it right through, and that is Logan Grinsky. And we are going to take a 30-second timeout. Adrian's offense to get the football for the first time when we come back. You're tuned in to Bulldog Football on the Adrian College Sports Network.
Welcome back to the Adrian College Sports Network. Ian Wentz and Calvin Keyes. The Albion kickoff will be returnable by the Bulldogs at their own four-yard line. Trying to cut through, and he gets up to about the 15-yard line. That's where Adrian's offense will get things underway. It'll be first and 10 after the Adrian return by Chris Crumsey on the return. Bulldogs wearing their home black jerseys with the black numbering outlined in a thin gold pattern across the chest and back. Bulldogs all black helmets this afternoon. Ball will be placed at the 16. I want to see this Adrian offense take a slow and methodical approach. Let's get Tyler Poyer going, and let's try to hold on for, to the football as long as possible with how well this Albion offense is working. Here's a throw by Lopez deep, and it's a catch by the Bulldog tight end. That's the big man out there, 87, Ryan Brumley. Well, that's a big-bodied man. Makes a nice catch in traffic and a first down for the Bulldogs. Yeah, Brumley a big guy, but showed some nice breakaway feed there, speed excuse me, to cut into the middle of the field and got up for a nice grab and a first down on the first play from scrimmage. Quickly to the line they go. It's a run fake up the middle to give to Crumsey on the edge. Room for Crumsey, got a block. Chris Crumsey with a flag down inside the Britain side, gets pushed out of bounds, and I think we'll get a holding penalty on the tail end of the run by the receiver. Chris Crumsey, he did a great job of slipping through the first tackle, but this one likely coming back. This is probably going to be on Tyler Poyer. The flag was thrown at about the Albion 35. So if it's from the spot, this could be either a second and short or still a first and 10. Bulldog offense, Albion defense waiting for word from the gentleman in the white hat. And it's a 10 yard spot foul. So depending on where the hold was, I think it was at the 38-yard uh, line. At least that's where they picked the flag up from. And it's backed up to the Bulldog 48, so the holding must have been at the Albion 42 for them to back it up 10 yards. It's a first down and seven. Bulldog quarterback Lopez takes tosses to Poyer. Poyer lowers the shoulder near a first down. And Poyer not wearing number five. He's wearing his normal number 85. And you see the Bulldog tight end switch to uh, running back and does a good job there. Yeah, certainly. That's the textbook hard nose running we're used to seeing from Poyer. He's going to run downhill, and he's going to take whoever tries to tackle him with him. Second and short for Adrian. Ten and a half to go first quarter. Down by seven. Lopez under pressure. Mark throws and gets it out of bounds. Just an incomplete pass, third down and short. Albion leading here, 7-0 on their opening drive touchdown. Adrian looking for the answer with 10-17 left first quarter. Yeah, Bulldogs, or Britons rather, brought the pressure. That was Brandon Camfield, who was bursting into the backfield. Corner blitz somewhat and got in Lopez's face, forcing him to just throw that football away. Third down and short. Everyone tight to the line. Tyler Poyer leans forward, and he has the first down on a run by three. Tyler Poyer, first and ten Bulldogs. And look for how quickly the Albion offense moved. Adrian uh, returning the favor. This drive started at their own 14. They're already to the Albion 43. This is a big response from the Bulldog offense, isn't it, after giving up a touchdown early? Yeah, they needed it. We, I talked about the first five minutes while... First five minutes have expired. They're only down 7-0 here. Poyer with a run through the middle. Room for Tyler Poyer. Down to the Britain 35, 34-yard line. That is near another Bulldog first and 10. And that run through the middle. Nice job by Jack Sushela and company. 56, Isaiah Simon in the middle of the Bulldog line. I'll tell you what, Calvin, if you can run between the tackles at any level of football, it really changes what you can do offensively. Certainly opens up a lot of possibilities, and Paterno and Poyer are both really good at doing just that. First and 10, Adrian College. Lopez, the quarterback, looks left, throws high and incomplete. Going for Keontae Townsend on the far side. 
Key broke away from his defender, had about five yards of space, and Lopez just couldn't put it on him. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. That's on Lopez. Your receiver's wide open. Would have been a first down if you could complete the pass. Easier said than done, though, as the play develops quickly, and he's got a lot of different things that he's considering and looking at on the play. Easy to say up here from the booth. That it is. It's going to be this one a run, and this is uh, the return of Sal Paterno, and it's a short run, <clears throat> maybe half a yard for number five. Nice to see Sal back in the lineup. Not in there against Kalamazoo a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I think when you're able to have a committee of running backs who are able to pitch in with the physical and grueling nature of the position, especially the way that Adrian likes to run the football, good to have many hands to make the work a little bit lighter. Another third down. This one, 10 yards to go. Three Bulldog receivers to the right, tight end on the left side. Lopez looking right side. Crumsey dives and can't make the catch at the Albion 15. Early decision time for Coach Harry Bailey. Kick, punt, or go for it. They're switching up the formation, and it'll be the Bulldog punter, Sammy Lafada, as he'll try to pin Albion deep. This is right on the edge, Calvin. Field goal range, go for it, punt. Yeah, Getting some instruction from Coach Bailey, so we'll see if they have something dialed up here. It's the right decision because I believe... Miley's long is from within 35 yards. So this is out of his range. Lafada, the left-footed punter. The Bulldog fourth and 10, and Adrian lets the play clock expire. And this will be a delay of game on the offense. I think this is actually going to make it a little bit easier for the punter, Sammy Lafada. You could argue positionally he's been the best player at his position this season for Adrian with how well he's been able to boot the football away. And because of the strength he does have with kicking, I think it might have been a little bit harder for him to dial it in and, and do a little bit more of a pooch kick on the punt. So now this is more his typical range, I would say. Lafana now stands at his own 48, snaps a wobbly one, but gets back to him, puts his boot into this one. It's a high... Kick with some backspin hits at the Albion 5 and will be touched at around the 12-yard line. It's a nice job by Sammy Lafana. Punt team executes well, and now the defense with their second opportunity against an Albion offense. They really had no trouble moving that ball 60 yards for their opening drive score. Yeah, I think that's the right decision. When you see how talented this Albion team is, you don't want to give them any advantage, give them better field position. And now you're going to see the Britons start the drive from their own 12. And I think this Bulldog defense knows what to expect. This is a uh, quick hitting and, and fast Albion offense they're going to have to seek to contain here on this drive. They start at their own 12. Three receivers to the left of the Albion quarterback, one to the right. Five offensive linemen are running back to Lavelle's right. And the snap is back. Bulldogs rush four. Pressure late. Tip pass. It's incomplete. It was tipped off the Albion receiver hand. Philip Jones Price. He may have heard some footsteps of the Bulldog linebackers who were waiting. I think Lavelle also just, we were seeing his arm strength here early. He really zinged that ball to Fridley Bell. Tough one to catch when it's coming in at that velocity, but dangerous as the Bulldogs might have had a chance to pick that ball off. Yeah, deflected. Fortunately for Albion, went down to the turf. It's going to be a run through the middle, some pulling guards, and a nice job. That's Randall Broom taking the running back down after a short gain for Jones Price. And Albion looking at a third down. It's a third down and eight. Four down linemen for the Dogs. Three linebackers. Waitus Ashman, he is there. Good to see him back. He's lined up guarding the slot receiver. Third and eight for the Britons from their own 14. Snap back to Lavelle. Shea LaRue bringing pressure. Throws it out there for his man. It's too high, and it's incomplete. Pressure applied by Shea LaRue. The Lavelle pass too high. And we'll see the Albion College punt team for the first time today. And there you go. Bulldog defense with a big stop, forcing 
a three and out against this Albion team that is pretty dynamic. So a lot for the Bulldogs to be happy about on that defensive possession. Back there in coverage, Brett Allen. He was playing that lone safety spot on the third down and long. He was there in coverage. The Albion punt there. Upcoming. Snap is handled. The punt is away. And it will be fair caught. Hit off an Albion helmet. That play should be dead back at the Albion 49. And a Britain player picked it up and ran it. They throw a beanbag down at the 26. But Calvin had hit the Albion helmet inside Britain territory. That should be where that ball is placed. Am I wrong? I'm not sure. I mean, I've been wrong plenty. They need to talk <laughs> about this because that's exactly what happened. The punt hit an Albion helmet yeah. around the 50, and now they're going to move the ball. Uh, just a, a dome shot. That's using your head, Ian. Yeah, it is. So they're going to say it was uh, they, hit they, at the 45. Right. Yeah. They made up I had to give an Adrian an extra five, but maybe that's because I'm an alum. Adam, First and ten. Adam Mills there. Maybe that's a little bit of preview of the women's soccer matchup we're going to see between <laughs> these two schools tonight. <laughs> Three receivers for the Bulldogs to the right side. Nobody out to the left. Out wide. Tight end tight to the line. High snap for Lopez. Gets it back to Poyer. Tyler Poyer just grabbed that thing out of the air and led forward for one yard. He gets uh, maybe a half yard, I should say. Second and long. One of the things that Tyler Poyer has going for him. He's a quick thinker. We see that there. Grab the ball. Salvage the play. Let's get some yards out of the botch snap, and that's what he did. Second and 10, so no gain on the rush. 6 and 51 left in the first quarter. Lopez looking deep for Seslar. Too high for everybody, and it's incomplete. He was uh, nearly intercepted by Albion's 22. That's Mitchell Raphael, the sophomore defensive back. Lopez struggling with his accuracy here on these throws down the field and sets up a third and ten. Luckily, Poyer on that previous play was able to get back to the line of scrimmage like we talked about. Otherwise, this could be a much longer scenario. Here's another chance for Lopez to try and complete a pass downfield. They need ten on the third down. Snap back to Mark. Looking middle, feels pressure, throws it up for grabs, and it's intercepted. At the Albion 32-yard line, it'll be Britain football, first and 10, the interception for number 24, James Bloomfield, the senior. Bloomfield just, that ball absolutely fell into his lap. One of the easiest interceptions he'll have in his career. And the play starts again with Brandon Camfield, who's been in the face of Lopez early on, bringing pressure. I think Mark was hit as he got rid of that football, and that's one of the reasons why it was right to the Albion secondary. So our first turnover of the afternoon is an Adrian College interception. 6 and 38 to go. It's Albion 7 and Adrian 0. Ian Went, Calvin Keyes in the broadcast booth. Reagan Petrowski, Laura Witkowski engineering this afternoon. It's a snap back to Lavelle. Hands off to his running back, dancing through the middle, dragging Riker Bid while the Adrian College tackler ahead for about six yards. That's Tayshawn Nichols with his first rush of the day. How about the shiftiness from Nichols? Sidestepped a couple of tacklers. Tough guy to bring down and put on a little shimmy shake on the Adrian defense to get an extra gain after the first contact. Second down and four for the Britons. It's going to be a run through the middle once again. Bounces it to the right side. First down Albion to the Bulldog side of the 50. Nichols again to the 48 of Adrian College. That's a run, good enough for first and 10. And again, slipperiness from Nichols as he was drawing his first contact at about the line of scrimmage, but able to shake outside and again, pick up a nice gain to move the sticks. Albion operating off the Mark Lopez interception. First and 10 at the Bulldog 48. Lavelle, the quarterback, claps his hands. It's a straight drop back, throws middle, caught. Tackled immediately by A.J. Pipkins is the Albion pass catcher. Kai Bristow, good for about six, maybe seven. Been impressed with Lavelle so far in this contest. He's not trying to do too much, just making the simple throw and gradually move down the field, trusting his receivers. Four down linemen for the Adrian defense. Snap is high to Lavelle. He takes it and gives it to his running back. 
Ruma over the left side, down near the 35, takes a couple Bulldogs to wrap him down. Tayshawn Nichols tackled by Andrew Thomas and Riker Bidwell, and that's enough for a first and 10 to the Bulldog 35. That was close to being an offsides penalty against the Bulldogs. We had two guys jump, got caught by the hard count of Lavelle, but able to stay on their side of the line of scrimmage just barely. Tayshawn Nichols stays in at running back. One of two in the Britain's backfield as Lavelle will take the snap. Number seven gives. It's to the second running back. Ahead for a couple is number nine, the running back, Colby Taylor Browning. And Albion just getting some little chunk plays out of that run game. That's good for four. Four and a half to go. First quarter, 7 nothing Albion. With the ball in driving. Ball resting at the Adrian 31. Approaching four minutes left in the half. Lavelle takes fakes. Looking left side. Throwing up top. One-on-one -on -one coverage. And it's just out of the reach of its intended receiver, 88, Devin Fridley-Bell. Nice coverage by A.J. Pipkins for the Bulldogs in the back end. Yeah, Pipkins stays glued to the Albion receiver, Fridley-Bell. Fridley-Bell, pretty quick guy. Pipkins, speedy as well, able to stay with him. And that's just textbook coverage. Not playing the man until the ball was in the vicinity. One deep safety out there for the Bulldogs. It's Brett Allen. He'll survey the Britain offense who are looking at a third and six at his own 31-yard line. It's going to be a run. Run right side. First down Albion. Inside the Adrian College 20. And that's another rush for Colby Taylor. Browning and Calvin. They're finding success on the right side of the offensive line here in the early going. Certainly. Albion's, uh, sorry, 72. Diarian Bond uh, out there at right tackle making some things happen. Yeah, Bogan up just got caught in the spin cycle of Taylor Browning. Spinorama action. He spins off the contact and picks up more yardage. Yards after contact, the theme here for Albion on offense. First and 10, they go from the Adrian 18. 3 and 30 to go, first quarter, 7 nothing. Albion, it's a run. Left side to the end zone, touchdown Albion. An 18-yard rush for number 9. That's Colby Taylor Browning. And the Britons add on to their lead, and it's now 13-0 as they take the interception and turn it into a touchdown drive. 13-0 Britons here at Adrian College. Another look at this play from Taylor Browning. He looks like he's shot out of a cannon here. Gets the handoff from Lavelle and then just lickety split to the end zone. No one's going to catch him. Trots in there. And, you know, for Taylor Browning, he's had a strong start. That gets them to over 40 yards rushing here just about 12 minutes into the football game and looks like the extra point is up and good to make it 14-0 Britons. We'll be right back. Bulldogs to get the ball when we return in 30 seconds with 3 and 23 left. It's Albion 14, Adrian nothing here on the Adrian College Sports Network. Man. If there was one word... I was going to use to describe the communication arts program at Adrian College, it would be unique. Students find themselves on the radio, in front of and behind the camera, and directing their own programs. Students learn in a personalized environment that sets them up for a world of opportunities. Are you ready for your moment in the limelight? To learn more about the Rush Communication Center and Adrian College's communications program by visiting adrian.edu today. Welcome back to the Adrian College Sports Network. I'm Ian Wentz, and that's Calvin Keyes. Adrian looking for answers here early. It's 14-0 Albion, 3-23 left in the first quarter, and a kick that rolls to the 40, and Albion jumps on the ball. What is going on here, Calvin? The kicker, I wasn't even watching him kick. Can we get a replay on the that? The ball rolled off the tee, uh, sat at the 40, <laughs> and... Once an Adrian player touched it, Albion jumped on the football, and we're going to see exactly what's going to happen here. This is not good because the Britons are going to get the ball back here. It's going to be first and ten. The Adrian player who went after it there, who I couldn't spot. Can we see that replay again? The, the mistake the, the Bulldogs made there on the kickoff, if we could take another look at it. If you so see the here, so the kick is by. terrible. He forgets to kick the ball. But you cannot touch this football, or if you touch it, you've got to dive on it. 
because oh you see, since the return man touched the football and immediately his hands go up in the air because All right, so oh, the okay, call so is gonna illegal Gabe. touching. So here's what the referee said if he couldn't pick it up through our microphones is that the kicker kicked the ball and then it touched the kicker before uh, the, another player touched it. So so they're going to say it's an Adrian football from that spot. It's going to be a first and 10 at the 37. That is something you don't see every day, <laughs> Calvin. I don't think that was that was not a planned onside no, kick. That was just was a not. whiff on a kick. It was not. And they say it bounced off the Albion kicker, and he can't be the first one to touch it after he kicks it. Correct. Bulldogs have to touch that football next. Miss cue from Gerwinski. See what the dogs can do. Here's a powerful run by Tyler Poyer. Oh Ball boy. popped out at the end. They'll say he's down on the play. All kinds of craziness. Logan Gerwinski, yeah, like you said, kicked the ball off the turf, hit himself. I was thinking that that hadn't transpired, in which case if the return man for the Bulldogs had touched it and then Albion had fallen on it, right. they would have got the football back again. Instead, Adrian catches a break here, and they're going to get some really favorable field position from the Albion 37. It's going to be a run again for Tyler Poyer. He tries the left side following Nate Bennett. He gets down to the 29. And, Calvin, if you look at all the officials here today, that's why they are here and we are in the booth. I'm watching where the ball should be going and setting up a return, and they're able to see exactly what happened with that kickoff. So we criticize officials when they make mistakes. Looks like they got it right. Yeah, they certainly did. And I think that might have caught the officials off guard, too. I don't know if I've ever seen something like that in a football game. I've never. Third and short for Adrian Collins. Toss play to Tyler Poyer. Cuts it inside, leaning toward the line to gain. He's about a yard short as he needed the Albion 27. He is marked at the 28 where it will be a fourth down. And this is likely a go-for-it situation, being down 14-0 with now two minutes left in the first quarter. Yeah, you said it. And if what, you hand two the ball off minutes? The yeah, oh, okay. two minutes. Right. Stretch that one out. <laughs> uh, Tyler Poyer, if they hand it off to him up the middle, this should not be a problem getting this first down. And they do that handoff, and it is not a problem for young 85. That's going to be a Bulldog first and 10 after a two-yard rush for Tyler Poyer. And we've heard earlier in the season that uh, Tyler Poyer is the best player on this team, right? We heard that said often. So just put him at running back <laughs> and see what he can do. He's done a nice job this afternoon after a sort of a breakout performance against Kalamazoo. Yeah, the 220-pound senior is pretty much automatic for a two- or three-yard gain, so smart decision giving it to him on fourth down. It's going to be a run fake. Lopez gets hit in the backfield. Ball is loose, and it's going to be falling on at the 44 by the Bulldogs. Near disaster, and it's just going to be a giant loss as Cole Sesslar jumps on the ball. And a sack fumble by the Albion defense sets the Bulldogs back now about 15 yards from the first down play. Oh, man, no one wanted to grab this football. Cole Sessler says, I'll take it. Dives on it as it was taking some odd bounces. And, you know, you credit Albion's... Uh, Alex Olenek there with that big hit on Lopez that's now going to set up second and a country mile. And a country mile is 28 yards this afternoon <laughs> where they set up for a second down. Lopez looking to throw, gets hit as he throws, and it's low and incomplete going for Keontae Townsend as Lopez just took another shot. And Calvin, we've seen this all season now. These Bulldog quarterbacks have been beat up through seven games. Yeah, the, the run blocking looks really good from the Adrian offensive line, but the pass protection has left a little something to be desired, Ian. And they need to find something here on a third and 28 from their own 44, trailing by 14, 21 seconds left opening quarter. I think one of the reasons why Lopez has struggled with accuracy is because he's hearing footsteps in the backfield at every turn. Here's Lopez feeling those footsteps. He'll get taken down, swallowed under, back at his own 45-yard line. So what turned into a... First and 10, turns into a fourth and long on the sack by Orlando Daniels. And this is the most obvious punt in all of football. We will see it to start our second quarter as Albion has a lead over your Adrian College Bulldogs. It's 14-0. We'll be back 
with second quarter action after this 30 second timeout right here on the Adrian College Sports Network. If there was one word I was going to use to describe the communication arts program at Adrian College, it would be unique. Students find themselves on the radio, in front of and behind the camera, directing their own programs. Students learn in a personalized environment that sets them up for world of opportunities. Are you ready for your moment in the limelight? To learn more about the Rush Communications Center and Adrian College's communications program by visiting adrian.edu today. Welcome back to the Adrian College Sports Network. Ian Wentz and Calvin Keyes. That's my double A football action between your Adrian College Bulldogs and the Albion College Britons. It's 14 0. Ian Went, Calvin Keyes, a full broadcast crew, including our engineers, Reagan Petrowski, Laura Witkowski. Calvin, you have the rest of the list of our crew that um, is making this broadcast possible. Yes, yeah, certainly. You mentioned those two doing a great job. Megan Abbey is our switcher. Our camera people are Forrest Vernier, who's just working the top cam. We also have Connor Shelb and Gino Capiccioni. Gino Cappuccino, as we call him. I need some <laughs> caffeine here on this Saturday afternoon. A nice sunny afternoon for this rivalry, a long-time rivalry between Adrian and Albion. It's going to be a fourth down and 38. That's not a typo. Fourth and 38. Snap back to the punter, Samuel Lafana. Nearly got it blocked, but look at this punt. High into the Adrian sky. Will be returnable back at the 18. Makes a move to the 20, up to about the 21-yard line. And that Albion College return to 88, Devin Fridley-Bell. And a good open field tackle there by Brett Allen, who hustled down the field and Made a nice tackle. The coaching staff for Adrian has really liked what they've seen from Allen as a freshman coming in this season. Or rather, yes, he is a freshman and has done a really good job stepping into the secondary role with other players out of the lineup due to injury. Yeah, taking the place of the injured Donovan McCary, the longtime Bulldog safety and staple in the Bulldog secondary, has been out with an injury most of this season. He looks on, his team looking to claw back from a 14-0 deficit, opening stages, second quarter. Lavelle, the Albion quarterback, will take the snap, and he's going to give off, run through the middle. Not a ton of room for the Albion running back. And that's the run for number 23, Curtis Hamilton. I actually say no gain on the play. Tackled by Riker Bidwell. Second down and 10 for the Britons. Opening 30 seconds of our second quarter. Lavelle claps his hands once. Claps his hands twice. That's a lyric of a song that I don't remember the name of right now. Lavelle throws left side. And is it caught on the far sideline? It is a nice catch out there for the Britons number five. That's Kyle Bristol with a nice catch. First down, Albion. Well, while we're talking about karaoke... <laughs> you look at the Albion quarterback, uh, Luke Lavelle. He's been conducting the orchestra that is this Albion offense extremely well. They're firing on all cylinders. It's a symphony to our ears here at Docking Stadium. Well, maybe not for the Adrian fans. The Britons fans are across the way. They're loving it. Here's a run right side. Lowers the shoulder near the sticks. That's 23 again, Curtis Hamilton. And the Albion fans that did travel well here to Docking Family Stadium applaud a nine-yard run. Yeah, it's a sea of purple on the far side of, of Docking Stadium. Looks like a Prince concert out here in Adrian. Second and short for the Britons. Albion eight first downs in the first half. Adrian uh, with four. Britons looking at a second and short. Lavelle will throw. Lavelle looking sideline. He overthrew his man by a couple of steps. Brett Allen in coverage for the Dogs looking for his Big wide receiver, Nick Christian, the tight end. Christian was open there, was able to sneak around Allen. Rare incompletion for Luke Lavelle, who's been loving life here in this second quarter. What's that? Luke Lavelle's been loving life in the second oh, quarter. His okay. offense is humming. That he has. I was reading something, sorry. He looked at me like I was supposed to respond. It's a third down and short for Lavelle. He's going to hand it off, and the running back touches his knee in the backfield. Lost about three. That's a mistake for Curtis Hamilton. Not sure if he was influenced or not, but that's a Bulldog break, and Albion 
will punt here on a third down stop. NFL rules would have been fine, but Curtis Hamilton got that knee on the ground. I think it was just a little bit of a shaky handoff there, and a miscue will force the punt as they send out Chris Bowman. Deep for the Bulldogs on the return is number 80, Darnell Bates. Here goes the punt. It's up and it's away. It's a short punt. Fair caught. Diving over the 30 of the Bulldogs. And they will mark this, I believe, at the 32-yard line where we'll be first and 10. You like the effort from Bates there to come down with the ball because if he had just left it be, it probably would have been an Albion roll for about 5 to 10 more yards. So sets up a little bit better field position, and Bulldogs will start from their own 37-yard marker. Looking for the first score this afternoon. Still just a 14-0 deficit, 12-32 and 32 left in this first half. Ian Wentz and Calvin Keyes with you from Adrian College, Docking Family Stadium. Lopez in the Bulldog offense. We'll start with a run for Tyler Poyer, swimming through the middle of the line, good for two yards. Tyler Poyer got the start this afternoon. Normally the tight end slash H-back gets another rush. Poyer eventually brought down by big Michael Pruchnik. A little bit of an update on the NCAA men's hockey team for Adrian College. They're level with Utica on the road, 2-2 with 15 minutes to go. Lopez looking at a second and eight. Here's a long throw left side, caught. That's Cole Sesslar extending those arms above his head, making the catch. Nice grab from freshman to senior, first and 10 Bulldogs. Yeah, look at this sensational snag by Sesslar. Lopez gonna look to the bottom of your screen and then Sesslar able to get up for the jump ball. A deep out route. That's a tough throw to make and Lopez does it. First and 10 right at the 50. On the base of the A that Bruiser is leaning on here at Kapnick Field. It's a run for Tyler Poyer, and he gains a couple down to the Albion 48. Donovan right with the tackle for the Britons there. Sets up second and eight, as you said, with 11-10 left to go in the second quarter. Bulldogs trailing by a pair of touchdowns. Lopez with two receivers right, one left, looking to throw, throws left side. Catch made by Keontae Townsend, and that's enough for an Adrian College. First and 10 as the connection from Lopez to Townsend. I think the key to success for the Bulldog offense is to get Townsend involved, and they do so here, his first catch of the afternoon. Bulldog offense moving nicely here after the setback on their last drive. Looking at a first and 10 as they look into the afternoon sun. 10 and a half to go, second quarter, 14 nothing. Albion. Lopez will take and hand off. Poyer met in the backfield and dropped for a loss. 97 in on the fun for Albion, one of the many Britons down there. That's Michael Kruchnik. Oh, I was just informed on that song I was referencing. It's Mambo number five. Mambo number yeah, five, okay. Yeah. I forgot what it was called. I'm sorry. It's a the second. only song I want to hear right now is Hail Adrian at the end of this drive, Ian. I love it, Calvin. Ten minutes to go in this half. Throw deep for Lopez. Looking for Crumley. Or Crumsey, excuse me. He goes out of bounds. Couldn't quite get his Bulldog paws on it. And it's now a third down and long. Looks like he got forced out to the sideline and stepped out of bounds. So I don't know if that catch would have stood even if he had reeled it in. Coach Harry Bailey drawing something up here as he's been the longtime offensive coordinator. First game as head coach, a big third down here for his Bulldogs. Four receiver set, Townsend and Crumsey at the bottom. Paris and Sessler up top. Lopez looking left side. Lopez feeling pressure. Lopez sacked. Lopez sacked. sacked on the play for 91. And that's Orlando Daniels with a big time play. And Adrian will punt this football away once again. More magic from Orlando. The edge rusher getting around the left tackle. Gets through. 
and hurls down Lopez like a sack of potatoes for his second sack of the game. Yeah, tough play for Nate Bennett, the Bulldog left tackle. As Albion got Adrian in an obvious passing situation and just able to pin those Britain ears back. Here's a punt by Sammy Lafada. Look at this thing go. Lafada pins him inside the four. It's going to be returned. Maybe not a great decision, but he gets out to the 11, maybe the 12-yard line as Devin Fridley-Bell avoided disaster fielding that punt inside the five. Certainly Fridley-Bell able to snag it, bring it in for six more yards, but I agree. You would think he's going to try and let that football roll into the end zone for the right. touchback because then you get another 15. Approaching nine minutes left in the second quarter. At the same time, though, when we see the breakaway speed that Fridley Bill has, you never know. He had that good return off the hop, so he could be off to the races and difficult guy to catch. I believe he's already headed to the end zone at least once in this contest. Laval, the Albion quarterback, will take this snap and will hand off. It's a run through the middle, and not a lot going there for the Britons running back, Philip Jones-Price. He's met by a couple Bulldogs. Correction, Fridley Bell hasn't been able to score a touchdown, but he's looked really explosive on the returns, as I mentioned earlier. There's an Albion player down in the backfield. Looks like one of their linemen will step aside with them. We'll take a 60-second timeout. It's Albion 14, Adrian 0, here on the Adrian College Sports Network. Welcome back on the Adrian College Sports Network. Ian Went, Calvin Keyes. Good to see Mitchell Abrams, the offensive lineman, get up under his own power and walk off the field after he was attended to by the trainer. Eight minutes and 40 seconds left opening half. Britons with a 14-0 lead. Here's a run and a nice job in the Bulldog backfield. That's Riker Bidwell from the defensive backfield comes up and makes the play. It's going to be quickly a third down and long. It's nice to see from Bidwell, able to bring down Jones Price right off the hop. Don't want to give these guys any opportunities in the open field. Bidwell shuts them down. I mean, Calvin, the word to describe this team is young, right? Freshmen and sophomores all over the place, but another word you're hoping to add by the end of this year is resilient. They've faced a lot of challenges thus far, and Bidwell has been one of the bright spots for this team. Eight minutes to go, first half. Lavelle looking to throw. Bulldogs bring four. Tucks it under and gets taken down in the backfield. That That's is a Randall nice Broom. job by Randall Broom. Big number 93. Another standout for the Bulldogs on the defense. And Albion will punt away. And look, Calvin, these Brins are not pulling away. Adrian just won't let them do it. They're hanging tough. Broom bruises the Britain quarterback, Lavelle. Nice hustle to get off his block and chase down the shifty Albion quarterback. Forces a punt on fourth and ten. The Albion punter in his own end zone gets it away. It's a high spiraling punt. Will bounce at the Albion 40. Take an Adrian bounce. And for the second time this half, Adrian will start a possession inside the Albion 40-yard line. It's a little early to say must score, but you're in a great position to do it here if Lopez and company can get the ball into the end zone. Yeah, definitely, and down 14, this is a big, big drive in opposing territory. Try and close down. If you want to make a comeback, this is the time to get it rolling before things get out of hand. As we see Coach Harry Bailey, his first game as head coach with the interim tag on front of it. 
trying to beat his rival Albion. This is a throw for Lopez, finds his receiver right side, and a nice catch for Key. Keontae Townsend gets about seven, maybe eight yards on the far sideline. Second catch of the game for Townsend. Just a simple route, cut into the outside of the field and snagging it. Give credit to Bobby Willis for the stop for the Britons. Adrian a second down and a long three. Lopez in the shotgun with Poyer at his side. Gives to Tyler. Poyer left side. Ball pops high in the air, and it's a fumble recovered by Albion College. As they just put a shoulder right on the ball, and that ball popped about 15 feet in the air, fell right into the Albion defender's hand, and 94 came away with it for the Britons. That's Connor Dewan. I mean, Calvin, look how high that it's like a... Looked like a blimp there uh, for a second hovering up in the air. Roller coaster right up in the air, and just falls right to the Albion defense. That was a nice hit. Couldn't see who the Briton was who, who bumped into Poyer, but... Just rocketed that ball up in the air. Dewan able to come down with it. Turnovers have been the Achilles heel for this Bulldog team. It's their second turnover of the day going along with their earlier interception. That would have been close to, if not a first and 10 for Adrian. Now the Bulldog defense back out there once more. There's a fumble in the Albion backfield. And the Britain ball carrier able to fall on it. Calvin, we have perfect weather here today. I mean, temperatures in the mid 50s, no rain, light wind. And there, there's footballs going all over the place. Albion nearly gave it right back. You know, Halloween candy being sold all over the place. You wonder if these guys were snacking on Butterfingers before the game. Oh, geez. You're getting close to your quota here. <laughs> Try to hit it early so I don't have to worry about it late in the game. That's a good idea. So you can, you can stay focused in the second half. Pun Albion, quota, that is. <laughs> Albion looking at a second and 13. Throw to the middle, catch made. And that's going to be A.J. Pipkins dragged toward the sticks by the Albion receiver. Oh, here we go. Something after the whistle. That's going to draw an unsportsmanlike conduct flag. That's Kyle Bristol with the catch. I think it was 34. Ganop. Bo Ganop, who kind of knocked over the Britain receiver. The flag on the Albion sideline. And look, Calvin, last week, it's or two weeks ago, it's no surprise. Discipline you know, an issue. That, that there's, there's been discipline issues with this team at the end of plays. They're going to sort this thing out. And we'll get the call. The call's actually on A.J. Pipkins. It's a 15-yarder at the end of the play, so it must have been the Bulldog corner, A.J. Pipkins, who was the one who made the tackle and got dragged about six yards, called for the penalty after the play. I say this a lot, Ian. Pipkins is going to get checked out of the game here for the next play. He's a guy who plays with a lot of fire and a lot of intensity. It's just all about channeling those emotions in the right way. So you see him go over to his coach, Harry Bailey, getting the scouting report of his opinion of what actually happened on the far sideline. Share his side of the story. Absolutely. Albion a first and 10 at their own 45. It's going to be a run fake. Lavelle throws a tight end screen. Catch made and some blockers to the Adrian 40. 35-30 falls down on the tackle on the far side for Riker Bidwell. And that's a big time catch and run for 44. That's Trevor Smith, the junior tight end. You love the tight end screen against an aggressive defense, and it worked to perfection. Certainly, and again, just really nice blocking Smith with a lot of space to run into. Lavelle hands off on the first down, right into the teeth of the Bulldog defense. Adrian having none of it on that play. 96 in on the stop for Adrian Jacob Smith, and a short gain for the Albion running back. Five minutes, 10 seconds left, opening half. It's Albion 14 and Adrian 0. My name is Ian Wentz. Calvin Keys to my right. Albion working left to right with a two-score lead and the football. They scrimmage from the Adrian 27. Laval, the quarterback. Looks like everybody moved but the center. Gosh, I was going to make another Bamba number five reference, but <laughs> it's too late. False start on everybody but the center or just on the center. 
And they call it on the, the center, Benoit Richards. That's a five yard walk off. Ball now at the Adrian College 32. Albion's been far from perfect in this first half, but they've been able to capitalize when it counts, and that's the reason they're up 14-0. Approaching four and a half to go in the half. Adrian will get the football to start the second half. Here's Lavelle, throws middle, caught, and slipping through that first tackle is number five. That is Bristow. Albion now looking at a third down. Here's another look at the pass play from Lavelle. You're going to see him just quickly look outside and just sling a dart right on the money to his receiver. About 10 yards on the pickup. Puts that ball at the Adrian 22-yard line. Four down linemen across the front for Adrian. Lavelle will take the snap. Give middle. That's a run down inside the 20. He's close to the line to gain. He is short by about a yard. And that is a run for Taylor Browning. And Albion will stay on the field and go for this. They bring in a jumbo set, fourth and short from the Adrian 19. Big play here, late first half. Albion elected to go for it instead of kick. Docking Stadium bringing the noise here. Huge Laval. play. Albion quarterback stands in the backfield. From the shotgun, fourth and one. Lavelle will take fake throw to the flat. It's caught. He's tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Brent Allen with the tackle on the Albion tight end. Nick Christian, the freshman, was having none of it. What a huge play on fourth down. Awesome tackle there by Allen. Let's see it again. Lavelle's going to take the snap here and immediately look to the right side. Tosses one across to the tight end. Brett Allen read it to perfection and an awesome tackle. And look at Coach Bailey running out there. Good job, son. Little chest bump from player to coach. The defense makes the stop. Ball at the Adrian 20-yard line. First and 10, trips formation tight to the line right side. The quarterback, Lopez, looking for a deep shot one-on-one -on -one for Townsend. Key goes up. He thinks he got interfered with, and he did. Pretty clear P.I. marker comes down. Larry Platt didn't turn around for a second here. Look at this one. As Lopez just says, I'm going to my all-league receiver, Keontae Townsend, back shoulder throw. And Platt, you're right, did not allow Townsend to come back and make a play on the ball. You can't just wrap a guy up without turning around, Ian. And pretty easy call for the referee to make who was – right there next to him. And here we go, three minutes on the clock. And they'll mark off this 15 yard penalty. It will be an Adrian College first and 10, ball at the 35. Adrian has all three timeouts. Like you said, 313 left down, two scores. Adrian gets the ball to start the third. You need to score here. You'd love to go for a double dip here. End the half and start the half of the score. Run for Tyler Poyer, he gets hit hard. In the backfield, number nine and number 45 converging. That's Alex Olnick and 45. That is Camden Orlando. Got two different Orlandos on this defense for the Albion Britons. After the fourth down stop for the Adrian defense. Both Orlandos making plays. Camden Orlando, the inside linebacker, and then we've also got um, Orlando Daniels, the defensive lineman. Both have made some nice plays. Daniels, two sacks today. Two and a half to go in the half. It's a toss play for Tyler Poyer. Tries left side following the pulling of Jack Shisela. Gives him about three to the Bulldog, 38. It's going to be a third down now for Adrian offense as we are approaching two minutes left in this half. So you look to pick up this first down here if you're Adrian, then... You either go tempo or start using your timeouts, right? No need, to, no need to rush here. Two receivers left. The same number of them to the right. Lopez will take the snap. Steps up in the pocket, throws a wobbling duck, and it's incomplete. 
Not sure if Mark got hit or hurt on the play, but that ball came out weird, and Adrian will punt it away as Mark Lopez favoring that right arm. It looked like he had some time, but I don't know if an Albion player got a hand on Mark Lopez. He is in some obvious pain. We'll see a Bulldog punt. I mean, Mark stepped up into the pocket. I thought he avoided the Albion rush. So an incomplete pass. And the Bulldog offense stalls. It's a fourth down and seven. A punt for Sammy Lafada. And another great punt by Lafada. Look at this thing fly to the Albion 15. The Britain fielder takes it there and gets tripped up after about a 10-yard gain. And the ball will be right at the 20-yard line with 99 seconds left in this first half. And Calvin Sammy Lafada, he's been playing a great game this afternoon when you look at his averages and what he's been able to do from the punting position. That's for certain. Three punts for a total of 109 yards, averaging 36.3 yards per punt. I think his long was 45 before that kick, and he might have surpassed it with that laser from Lafada down well, the field. Yeah, and he had that one inside the 20 on the short punt, so that, that hurts your average a little bit. But Albion with the football here. They have three timeouts, and we know how fast this team can operate. Albion 14, Adrian nothing. A minute 39 left, first half. Ian Went, Calvin Keyes with you. At Docking Family Stadium, Lavelle looks to throw. Caught in the flat. Big time hit. Andrew Thomas laid the hit on Jones Price. That's some one-on-one -on -one violence. Goes to the Adrian defense. Nice play. A Thomas takedown. Able to hit the... Albion receiver, as you said, no room to breathe here. Comes up, hog time, clatters into him. Lavelle to throw, catch to the middle, first down Britons. And snagging that one is the receiver, Dylan Dennison. That's a first and 10. Albion goes here with 65 seconds left in the half. Lavelle, the quarterback, stands in the gun, two receivers on his side. Shea LaRue comes in on the rush, flushes him out of the pocket. Lavelle throws deep, looking for his man. Far sideline, he caught it. What a catch inside the 25-yard line. Big-time play to Joao Robinson. There was some good Adrian coverage, but a great throw by Lavelle and an even better catch. This is an incredible throw, and they're going to hustle up to the line of scrimmage here. Ball to 23 of Adrian, and Coach Harry Bailey will take a timeout to get his defense set. As they just got hit with a big play. We will take a 30 second break with them. It's Albion 14, it's Adrian nothing. 44 seconds left in the first half. You're tuned in to Bulldog Football on the Adrian College Sports Network. If there was one word I was going to use to describe the communication arts program at Adrian College, it would be unique. Students find themselves on the radio, in front of and behind the camera, and directing their own programs. Students learn in a personalized environment that sets them up for world of opportunities. Are you ready for your moment in the limelight? To learn more about the Rush Communications Center and Adrian College's communications program by visiting adrian.edu today. We welcome you back to the Adrian College Sports Network. Interim head coach Harry Bailey calls the timeout defensively as the Albion offense picks up a big pass play from Lavelle to Robinson. Ball at the Adrian College 23. Bulldogs down two scores. My name is Ian Went, Calvin Keyes next to me. 44 seconds left in this first half. Lavelle, the quarterback, will take this snap. He's going to fake the run. Looking right side, now looking left, feeling pressure, and throws it into the ground. And it's incomplete. The nearest Albion receiver was number five, Kyle Bristow. Yeah, how does he escape without an intentional grounding call? Now yep, we'll get there one. There it is. Uh, they had to talk about it. That will be grounding on the Albion quarterback. And we're going to pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Bulldog football on the Adrian College Sports Network. We are back on the Adrian College Sports Network. Ian went Calvin Keys, and you hear the arguments from the Albion sideline. 
on this looks to be intentional grounding call. They're going to stick and with that it is here, the though. Call. Now, I did say that Kai Bristol was in the area. Not close enough, says the officiating crew. That's a spot foul and a loss of down. That moves the football back to the Adrian 32 with 38 seconds left and a second down. One of my least favorite things in football is when a team just decides to kneel to run out the clock. I love what Travis Rundle, the head coach of this Albion team, is doing and taking advantage of all the clock they have left to try and extend their lead. Something I hope we see more often. It's a second down. And about 20. And we have another announcement. And the resulting penalty would incur a 10-second runoff unless the team that committed the penalty calls a timeout, and that is what Albion will do here. It's a second and 19. We'll keep it here at Kaepernick Insurance Field. Docking Family Stadium, Ian Went, Calvin Keys. Look, I mean, we, we saw an Albion score early, and then the next drive looked pretty good. And other than that, Adrian's really uh, tightened things up here. They have not scored yet, but they're keeping... Albion right in this thing and uh, within striking distance. Yeah, I think we're seeing the same thing as we did in Adrian's last game on the road at Kalamazoo where the defense didn't look like they were really ready to play off of the first drive. Albion just cruised down the field for a touchdown. And since then, they've really made life a lot more difficult for this talented Britain offense, providing some resistance. This is a talented Albion team, but Adrian making them work for it a little bit more here as this first half has gone on. They are, and look, and if you look at the, the Adrian offensive side, uh, they've not done many favors, right? They have an interception, they have a fumble, and they've had a couple of drives stall out. All things considered, you'd be happy to be down 14 nothing at this stage of the game. 38 seconds left in this half, 14 nothing Albion, with a second down and 19 from the Bulldog 32. Lavelle, the quarterback. Claps his hands twice, drops back to pass, looking deep, looking end zone, throws it up for grabs, and it's incomplete. What a nice job on that far sideline for A.J. Pipkins to poke that ball out of the receiver's hands to force the incompletion. I think they were looking down the field for Tayshawn Nichols on that play, and Pipkins a little bit fortunate. I think he turned around at the right moment there to escape with no flag on the play. And before we get this third down underway, we have another timeout on the field. This one called by Coach Bailey on the Bulldog defense. We'll return a big third down late first half. It's Albion 14, Adrian nothing. We'll be back in 30 seconds here on the Adrian College Sports Network. The Adrian College Media Production House provides opportunities for students to learn and grow live on the airwaves. Just like Matt Kibbe. I've gotten a chance to create a relationship with coaches and teams and learn more from people instead of trying to teach myself something. I've gotten an opportunity to expand my knowledge of sports, hone in on my skills as a broadcaster, learn about equipment in different ways. You get, a, you get more of a connection with professors as well. Providing opportunities, growing leadership. The Adrian College Media Production House. Thanks for tuning in. Ian Wentz, Calvin Keyes with you on the Adrian College Sports Network as we look down at Kaepernick Field at Docking Family Stadium. Off the Adrian College defensive timeout, it's third and 19 for Albion as they work from the Adrian College 32-yard line. Four down linemen up front for the Dogs. Lavelle, the Albion quarterback, stands at the shotgun at his 38, drops back to pass. Bulldogs brings some rush, dumps it off short, a catch and some space out there down the far sideline. He's gone for an Albion touchdown. 32 yards, little flare-out pass to Phillip Jones-Price. He was all alone, scampered down the sideline for the Albion touchdown. The Price is right, Ian. Getting in the end zone here, Phillip Jones-Price. Again, made it look easy. Explosive running after the catch, turns the corner, and he says, see ya to the Bulldog defense. Looked like a blown coverage as Jones Price was wide open in the flat. With 22 seconds left, the extra point is up, away, and good. 
and it now makes it a 21 to zero score. Albion College out in front by three scores. 22 ticks remaining in this first half. Adrian with one timeout left. And they're set to get this football here offensively. Yeah, that was a big drive for Albion. And as well as for the Bulldogs trying to mitigate uh, the deficit going into halftime. Down 21-0 feels like a bigger mountain to climb than 14-0, obviously. But being down 14 points feels a little bit more manageable going into the half. This makes it so that it's going to be a much tougher challenge for Adrian to try and come back in this football game. Yeah, and you go back to the, the last Adrian possession where they fumbled the football. They were driving deep in Albion territory, and the ball just pump, punched out of the hands of Tyler Poyer right to the Albion defender, and that eventually turned into an Albion touchdown. Albion turning defense into offense. Here in this first half, 21-0 Britons. Got Chris Crumsey as well as Jay Simerson back to receive. This kickoff will bounce at the five, picked up by Crumsey at the three. Chris Crumsey, some space to the 15, room for Crumsey to the 30, 40, kicker to beat at the 50, and the kicker angles him out of bounds at the Albion 44-yard line. Chris Crumsey. A massive kickoff return to give his offense maybe a chance here late in the half with 12 seconds to go. Crumsey absolutely cruising up the gridiron here, right up the gut. Some nice tackles made, but got to show a little bit of love to Logan Gerwinski as well, able to track him down. Crumsey with a lengthy return, grabbed it at his own five, takes it to the Albion 45. 12 seconds left. One timeout for Lopez and the offense. As they exchange footballs for the Adrian offense, two receivers to the right, two to the left. Running back is Poyer. He's out there with his quarterback, the freshman from Texas, Mark Lopez. Lopez, Four-man rush by Albion. Mark steps up, steps up, throws short, caught on his knees as Crumsey at the 35. There's an Albion player down in the defensive secondary grabbing at his ankle. With five seconds left, play is stopped. As the Albion trainers come out immediately to take a look at their defender, we'll pause 60 seconds as we have an injured player on the field. We'll be right back. Five seconds left in the half. It's Albion 21, Adrian 0. We'll be back in 60 on the Adrian College Sports Network. We welcome you back on the Adrian College Sports Network. Camden Orlando, the inside linebacker for Albion, the senior, was the injured player. They're helping him off on the far sideline. Looks like something to do with his right ankle. That's a big loss because Orlando's been pretty good for this Albion defense today. Ball at the Albion 36. Adrian with a second and two with four, three, two. Here's the final play of the half. Lopez steps up. Gives it all he's got to the middle. It's a jump ball tipped and incomplete. Batted down in the Albion secondary. And that is our first half and our score. At half, it's Albion 21. It's Adrian nothing. Our halftime show when we return. You're tuned in to Bulldog Football on the Adrian College Sports Network.
are so many firsts, lasts, and in-betweens. We're certainly not the last class to get a smile and a kiss from Bruiser walking across campus. We are never going to be the last class to begin our college careers by serving our local community and pursuing our passions. Above all else, come hell or high water, we will never be the last class to come to Adrian College and find a motivated and supportive community of students, faculty, and staff and lead with the skills and tools needed to be inspiring industry leaders and professionals with high hopes and dreams for our bright futures ahead. The people and the experiences that we are most grateful for are the ones that will continue us on this upward path for the rest of our lives. In the spirit of gratitude, thank you to my fellow classmates for being a part of this community with me. Whether we spent most of these moments together or barely crossed paths, you contributed your gifts and talents to continue the legacy of this incredible community. Thank you for prioritizing the preservation of the Adrian College experience and for continually seeking to develop the institution's ability to develop both the knowledge in our heads and the care in our hearts. Thank you to the roommates, friends, teammates, and peers who, although we have only known each other for four years, it seems impossible to think about being surrounded by anyone else in the coming weeks. We celebrated each other's accomplishments, became each other's biggest cheerleaders, and never let each other struggle alone. College has been called the most formative years of our lives, but I can say for certain that these last four years have included both the most amazing and most difficult moments of my life. One constant, however, is the support of my friends through it all. It is impossible to thank everyone who makes up our AC family. Together, you have each played an integral role in helping us achieve this momentous milestone. And you be proud to be a graduate of Adrian College. It's a good day to be a Bulldog. Thank you, and congratulations to the class of 2023. on the threshold of a magical time in your life, a time of significant growth and introspection, self-awareness, challenge, and opportunity. A time when you will always look back at and say, you know what, those were incredibly special years. Never experienced before I arrived and never replicated. We welcome you back to Docking Family Stadium Kaepernick Field here at halftime between your Adrian College Bulldogs and the Albion College Britons. It's a 21 0 score, Albion in front as we look down at the spirit of the stadium, the Bulldog Marching Band. Ian Wentz, Calvin Keyes here in the broadcast booth. Well, Calvin, just like uh, just about every game we've had this year, there have been some good, there have been some not so good. And uh, we'll start with the positives. Uh, look, the defense bending but not breaking at times. Offense moving the ball but not very consistently. Really turnovers have been a big factor in this game. Yeah, certainly. You look at, you know, the, the yardage from both teams. It's uh, very lopsided in favor of Albion. Britons have run 24 plays for 153 yards. Bulldogs have actually ran two more plays. They've ran 26 and only been able to pick up 63 yards. So, I don't know. Just the, the offense hasn't really been able to find the rhythm. On the other side of things, Albion has looked great on the offensive side of the ball. We look at, you know, turnovers. That's a big difference. Bulldogs uh, fumbled the football. They also threw an interception. So, that gives Albion... The ball in better positions, and they took advantage to go up 21 nothing heading into the half. As we look at the 
Michigan Intercollegiate Athletic Association. Uh, there are multiple games going on here this afternoon, here in late October. Earlier today, it was Alma rolling past Olivet, a 41 to 20 final, and Hope clobbers Kalamazoo 63 to 17. So those are the early games that took place today. Ours is the lone afternoon showcase here with the three o'clock start. It's a 21 nothing Albion score. And uh, look, if you look around the league, Calvin, uh, it's really been Alma's MIAA to you know, to give away, and they have not given an inch. This Alma team looks very solid. We'll see them actually here next week on Senior Day. Five o'clock start for uh, the Bulldogs and the Scots. But if you look at the scope of things, uh, Alma won the league last year after beating Albion late in the season, and they were able to make some noise in the Division Three playoffs. But, I mean, Albion is, or uh, Alma rather, on a roll, undefeated thus far. I mean, the Scots are an absolute wagon, 8-0. and They've got to play Adrian, and then as you were talking about, Albion at the end of the season. And I don't think there's any reason to think that they can't win out. They look like they're just on a whole nother level in this MIAA conference. Yeah, they are thus far, and a, a big win earlier today. And you look at the, look at the standings. In the Michigan Intercollegiate Athletic Association, Alma, as we just said, is 8-0. Hope is 7-2 overall. They are 4-1 in the league. Behind them is Trine. They are 3-1. They were uh, off today. Albion, 1-2, 5-2 on the season. Olivet is 1-3 in the conference, 3-5 on the year. Kalamazoo is 1-4, 4-4 on the year. The one win against these Bulldogs who are 0-3 um, in the MIAA and 1-6 on the season. So there's a look at the Michigan Intercollegiate Athletic Association, the oldest conference in America. Take a look at some of our first half stats here in just a moment. We'll take a 60 second break. We'll be back in 60 seconds here on the Adrian College Sports Network. students on the threshold of a magical time in your life a time of significant growth and introspection self-awareness challenge and opportunity a time when you will always look back at and say you know what those were incredibly special years never experienced before I arrived and never replicated after you leave college at Docking Family Stadium, Kapnick Field. Ian Wentz, Calvin Keyes here at the break, and it is an Albion Britain's lead of 21 to nothing over your Adrian College Bulldogs. Thanks for being with us this afternoon, however you may be listening or watching to this afternoon's broadcast. We have the first half stats to go through. We'll look at the team stats. First downs, Albion has 15, Adrian with 7. They have rushed 21 times for 96 yards. Adrian has 18 rushes for just seven, but keep in mind those uh, factor in the sacks that Co uh, Lopez has taken, the Adrian quarterback. Passing yards, 186 for Albion, 83 for the Bulldogs. Adrian is 5 of 16 with one interception, no touchdowns. Albion, they are 14 of 19 with a couple of touchdowns here this afternoon. Offensive plays, Albion has 40 for 282 yards, and Adrian has 33 plays for 90 yards. Interceptions, Albion has one, Bulldogs with none. Fumbles and lost, Adrian has two fumbles, they lost one. Albion has one fumble, and they did not lose it. Time of possession favors the visiting Britons. 
16 and a half to 13 and a half. Third downs have not been great for either team as Adrian is one of seven and Albion is just two of six. Red zone chances, Albion two of three. Adrian yet to reach the red zone of the Albion Britons. We'll take a look at some individual stats with Calvin here in a minute, uh, but we are going to look at the scoring in the first quarter at 11 and 39 left. It was an Albion run for Jones Price of 14 yards. The kick was good. That capped an eight play, 59 yard drive in three minutes and 12 seconds. The kick was good, made it seven nothing. And then at three and 23 left in the first, it was Taylor Browning with an 18 yard rush and the extra point good. It was an eight play, 63 yard drive in three minutes, 15 seconds. And that made the score 14 zero. Then in the second quarter, the lone score was right toward the end of it, 22 seconds left. It was a Jones Price reception from Lavelle. It was a 32 yarder, extra point good. It was an eight play, 80 yard drive in a minute, 17 seconds. And that made the score 21 nothing, Albion in front. Now with some of our individual numbers as both teams have hit the field here for second half warmups. Calvin, what are we looking at? I'm looking at Luke Lavelle. I mean, that's one of the best first half performances I think we've seen all season in terms of teams playing against the Bulldogs. Luke Lavelle, he was 14 for 19, completing 73.7% of his passes for 186 yards and a touchdown. The big highlight was that long 46-yard shot that he made late on in the first half. Lavelle. Really impressive. His QB rating is 173.3. Sacked twice, but didn't really seem to get to him. And a pretty even distribution between all of his receivers as Jare Robinson has two receptions for 52 yards. Kyle Bristow, who we talked about in the pregame, five catches, 49 yards. And then, of course, Phillip Jones-Price, the running back, also a receiving threat. Three catches for 45 yards and a touchdown. And then the other two touchdowns, as you mentioned, coming from their running backs. Phillip Jones-Price has a touchdown and 43 yards on the ground. And looking at Colby Taylor-Browning, he has a touchdown and four carries for 38 yards. So pretty even distribution. A lot of guys pitching in and... uh, Overall solid performance by Albion in that first half. Uh, Defensively, their leader in tackles is Eddie Hines. He had five tackles, two solo, and one tackle for loss. And right behind him, we've got a bunch of Britons with four tackles apiece. You're looking at the likes of Alex Olenek and Brandon Campfield, among others, who have had really strong performances Looking at sacks, there are two different guys with a sack in this contest. Orlando Daniels, as well as Alex Olenek, who we already mentioned. In terms of pass coverage, we've got James Bloomfield with an interception. And I believe there was also a fumble recovery. Trying to see who that was who had the fumble return in the first half. It was... Wow, okay, so it was James Bloomfield that had the fumble recovery and the interception in that first half. So a great first half for Bloomfield. He's playing great. All right, some quick uh, Adrian College numbers here. Leading rusher for the Bulldogs, Tyler Poyer, 14 carries for 45 yards. Chris Crumsey leads the receiving attack, two catches for 21 yards. And tackles Riker Bidwell leads Adrian College with seven total on the afternoon. The leading passer, no surprise, it's Mark Lopez. He has thrown 15 passes, completed six of them for 83 yards. He's been sacked three times and intercepted once this afternoon. Adrian will get the second half kickoff as the dogs will operate from left to right here on Kaepernick Field at Docking Family Stadium. Ian Wentz, Calvin Keyes, hanging out with you on a beautiful fall afternoon in Southern Michigan. Albion will boot this one away. They lead it by three scores, a 21-0 deficit for your Bulldogs. Kicking this one away will be 87, Logan Logan Krawinski. And he does just that. Will be 
into the end zone for a touchback. That's a solid boot, Calvin, as he kicked that one into a, a slight breeze. Yeah, a lot better kick from Gerwinski than one of the attempts we saw in the first half. Nearly the, the, a the uh, turnover there. Yeah, the phantom kickoff. Yeah, that somehow was interesting. He, he swung his leg and barely touched the ball, but then it bounced up and hit him. Gave Adrian their best field position of the afternoon. But that's in the first half. Those things have happened. Let's see what's to come. Adrian down by three scores. It's Lopez throwing it to the left side. It's going to be a catch and a nice little move after the catch. Couldn't quite grab the number. Was it Paris with the reception it out there, Calvin? Elijah Juan Paris with the catch. It's good for about six yards. Opening possession, third quarter. First catch for Paris this afternoon. Lopez, the quarterback, stands in the shotgun. A receiver up to the left. A couple down to the right. Pitch, play to Poyer. No one there to block for him. Tackled in the backfield. Brandon right, Camfield. Yeah, right in the backfield was Camfield and made the easy tackle. Poyer had nowhere to go. Camfield continues his strong day as he's got a sack. That is one of his five tackles on the day. Ian Went, Calvin Keyes with you. Opening minute, first drive of the second half. Adrian looking up at a 21-0 score. They have the football for a first and 10 attempt here on the third and long. Lopez, the quarterback, feels the pressure, throws left side, high, but caught. Nice grab by Paris up over the Adrian 40 to the 44-yard line. Going up and getting it, young man. First down, black and gold. Paris towering above the defensive back, Mitch Raphael. So we look at this one again. It's a beautiful job. Good, Good throw, throw by, by Lopez. Lopez. Yeah, yeah, jinx. First one all year. It's a nice job on the connection. A couple young players out there. Paris, also a freshman. Lopez, a freshman. Three receivers out to the right side for Mark. Lopez throws it left side. Keontae Townsend makes the catch, turns up field for about eight. Townsend, a nice catch and run. Tackled just a yard shy of that first down marker. Lopez finding his rhythm here on the opening drive. Third straight completion for him. Two receivers to the right, Seslar and Paris. Townsend up top, they throw to Key again, a little five yard turnaround, catch, first down, dogs, ball fumbled. Was he out of bounds? When was he out of bounds? What's the call? Oh. I don't see a indication of Albion first down. I see a out of bounds Adrian ball. Well, that's right in front of the Albion bench. The ball did pop out, but they say that forward progress was stopped on Keontae Townsend. You that was nearly another turnover. Was loose. You did hear that whistle go before the ball was loose for, for Townsend there, and it would have been Olenek on the recovery if not for the forward progress call. So Adrian converts the second and short to a first and ten. Townsend stays out there to the left. Albion shows pressure, then back out. Lopez steps up in the pocket, throwing deep for Townsend. It's just out of his reach as he was inside the Albion 15-yard line. That's about a step off from either Lopez or... Uh, Townsend, and that was nearly a deep connection. Yeah, it wasn't far away. Would have been a big play here, but you like what you're seeing from Lopez to start this second half. Yeah, completion percentage, not the greatest. He's only made the one mistake with the interception. Looking at a second down and 10 to go from the Albion 41. Substitution for both teams. Paris and Crumsey. Line up in the slot. There's some speed out there near the football. Lopez looking that way. Throws. Caught by Paris on a slant. Gets driven down to the ground. That's a big tackle. A hard hit for 25 Camfield. Already Paris' third catch of the second half. Yeah, didn't make a, a catch in the first half. Sets up a third down and two at the Albion 33. This appears to be four down territory if they don't get it here. Trips to the left, run for Poyer that side. He's got a full first down on the forward progress to the 29 yard line. They like running behind that trips set. 
on the that, that tight to the line of scrimmage play. They put the tight end out there and follow Nate Bennett. He's a very good run blocking left tackle. We know that over his many years at Adrian College. Certainly is and does it again on that play. Opening drive, third quarter. 11-22 left in it. Lopez will give off to Poyer. Poyer, nice blocking on the edge. Slips through one and two tackles. Maybe he's been out of position for three years. Says Tyler Poyer, the tight end, converted to running back. Picks up about eight on the rush. Yeah, but nice gain here from Poyer. You're going to see him follow his blockers, follow Nate Bennett, as you said, to the right side. And finally brought down by Larry Platt at the 21-yard line, setting up second and two. It's just a good football player. I mean, you can see it when you look back and watch the games 85 in black and gold. He takes the playoff. It's a second down and short as Sal Paterno enters the Bulldog backfield. Fake run to him. He'll stay in the block. Lopez throwing right too high into our cheer and dance team on the near sideline. It's a third down and short. Also near one of your camera crew members down there at about the eight yard line. Yeah, look out Gino. Ball coming <laughs> in hot there, buddy. Good composure there though. I love it. Didn't no, waver. No, he didn't. He's gotta get he's gotta get the, the the footage. He's a lacrosse player, so he's tough. He's used to balls heading his way. Third down and two. Lopez trouble handing it off to Paterno, but Sal leans forward. He's close. Depends on the spot. He looks just about a football length short as there were problems in the Adrian backfield from Lopez to Paterno, and it will be a fourth down and about the length of a football just inside the Albion 20. And Sal comes up with one shoe on his foot and one in his hand. So they put Poyer back in the backfield from the shotgun on fourth and short inside the Albion 20. Ten to go in the third quarter. Give to Poyer. Poyer climbing through the pile. First and ten. Black and gold, and that's a great job by the left side of the line. Just Shayla and Bennett for the Bulldog first and ten. Just the old reliable play call. Feed TP. And Poyer eclipses the first down marker to move the chains. This would be a nice job if this team can find the way to get into the end zone mentally and also get yourself quite literally back into this game. 21-0, Albion, 9.5 to go, third quarter. Lopez looking left, throws high, but it's caught. Inside the 10, the ball's fumbled inside the 5. Who fell on it? A Bulldog might be on the football, and it is. As Seslar coughed up the football, and I think that was Chris Crumsey falling on it. That's a heads-up play by the freshman. Nice job by number zero. But, man, ball security just seems to have been an issue every week here. It works out okay, but we already saw TP fumble earlier, and, and Sessler has some trouble holding on there. Crumsey able to fall on it. Luckily, right place, right time. They mark it at the two first and goal. Adrian's first time in the red zone this afternoon. Nine minutes to go, third quarter. Snap, give, Tyler Poyer spinning, diving. He is right near the goal line. They're going to mark him about a half yard to a full yard short. And they'll try this again. I'm surprised we've seen Adrian try to throw the football as much as they did in that first half. Now they have to because they're down 21, don't have a lot of time, but just feels like handing it off to Poyer is the right play every, set, every snap, really. 45 yards in the first half. Adding on to that here in the third quarter. Poyer's in the backfield in the shotgun with Lopez. Lopez gives Poyer in zone. Touchdown, Adrian College. Tyler Poyer right through the middle, and the Bulldogs are on the board here at home. That's a great start to this half. Lopez leads him down the field. Poyer bangs it home, and that's an Adrian College touchdown. The theme for that drive was, you know, Tyler Poyer. They get it started off with some explosive pass plays, but sticking to their guns here at the one-yard line. Poyer will just plop right down into the end zone for the touchdown. Alec Miley lines up for the extra point. The kick is up away, and it is good. And we have a ball game here in Adrian. It's now 21-7. Albion in front. The first touchdown scored under the interim head coach, Harry Bailey. 
It comes at 8 and 21 left in the third quarter. We'll be back in 30 seconds. You're tuned in to Bulldog Football on the Adrian College Sports Network. If there was one word I was going to use to describe the communication arts program at Adrian College, it would be unique. Students find themselves on the radio, in front of and behind the camera, and directing their own programs. Students learn in a personalized environment that sets them up for world of opportunities. Are you ready for your moment in the limelight? To learn more about the Rush Communications Center and Adrian College's communications program by visiting adrian.edu today. Good afternoon, football fans, and welcome back to Docking Family Stadium. Put your rally caps on, Bulldog fans. We have ourselves a 14-point game once again. It's 21-7 Albion, a one-yard touchdown run for Adrian Tyler Poyer. Here's an onside kick. The Albion player goes up and calls for a fair catch, and that is a smart play right at the 50 by 21, Jack Taylor. And you like the aggressive nature and I think that penalty is going to go on a, a Bulldog linebacker out there on special teams. Yeah, Steven Marino was the guy with the hit after the fair catch was called. That's the call. 15 yards. So Adrian tries that. Um, pooch it up in the air to the right side onside kick. And that's just a smart football play. You wave for the fair catch. That way they can't hit you. You can focus on catching the ball. It's now being possession. They're going to mark this down to the Adrian 35. Yeah, tough tough break there for the Bulldogs. As you like the aggressiveness from Marino. You wonder if he just didn't see the fair catch signal and went in for the tackle and sets up some great field position for Luke Lavelle and company. And Adrian Drive took most of this third quarter. See, I'll be an offense first time on the field. Lavelle will take... Give to his running back. He has two touchdowns tonight, today, I should say. And this is a run for six yards for Jones Price. Tonight we'll have more Albion versus Adrian, correct? Yeah, some MIAA postseason play, some women's soccer here at Docking Stadium. We'll run it back. Same schools, same place, same commentators, same station, the ACSN. <laughs> Seven and 52 left in the third quarter. Tight end goes in motion for Lavelle. This is a handoff. Left side of the defense cutting through is Jones Price. He's going to get upended about two yards shy inside the Adrian 30 to about the 27 yard line. It'll be a third down and two for Albion. You know, in a comeback attempt here, down 14. Boy, a stop here would be critical, wouldn't it? It would be huge. A turnover would be even better. Third and two for Albion, 7.18 to go, third quarter. Lavelle stands in the pistol, hands it off middle, looking for space. I don't think he got there, Calvin. I think he stood up at the line of scrimmage. They tried to get it to Curtis Hamilton, and the Bulldog defense stands tall on third down and short. Expect Albion to go for it here in four down territory at about... The 26-yard line, that's where the marker is, and they're two yards shy of that at the 28. Coach Harry Bailey imploring his team and the fans here at Adrian to get loud. It's a fourth and two for the Albion offense at the Adrian 27-yard line. Six and 35 to go third quarter. Albion by two scores, 21-7. Lavelle in the shotgun. They need the 25. Lavelle stands in, feels pressure by LaRue. Lavelle rolls out. He's got the first down as he dives inside the 25. Oh, boy. LaRue was in there in a flash. Lavelle rolled out and got the first down with his legs. Good improvisation here by Lavelle. As, as you said, La LaRue just charged right through. Unfortunately for the Bulldogs, most of their secondary was deep in coverage, so it was an easy first down pickup for Lavelle on fourth down. Six minutes to play, third quarter. Albion 21, Adrian 7. Lavelle fakes the run. Now he's looking to pass, throws deep end zone, and it's caught. No, he didn't come down with the ball. The ball popped out at the end, and the official signals touchdown. Wow. I have never seen that. 
Devin Fridley Bell did all the hard work of snagging the football, and as soon as he hit the ground, it came out. So expect this call to get overturned. I, I I'll would be shocked th- if this stands. I, absolutely. That's an incomplete pass. You every every other day of the week, we'll get the call. You can't see the replay on our on our video feed. Yeah, the process not completed. Detroit Lions fans know that well. A la <laughs> Calvin Johnson. Different Calvin. Different Calvin. You can't see it on our video replay on ACTV, but it was right in that back corner of the end zone. And Fridley Bell, like I said, did all the hard work, had his feet in bounds, had the ball secured, but apparently didn't at the end of the day because he hit the ground and the ball came flying out of his hands. So a break for the Bulldogs. That was a great throw again by Lavelle right in the corner. It was. A.J. Pipkins, tight coverage for Adrian, too. 5-53 Five and 53 to go, third quarter. 14-point lead for Albion. Lavelle, the quarterback, feels pressure, hands off. Price Jones in the backfield hit. <clears throat> Jones Price dropped for a one-yard loss. Adrian sliding down into a run blitz, and that's a good play call by the defense. Certainly. You notice they've closed down time and space for Philip Jones, Price, and company who are breaking off some explosive runs in the first half. All right, Adrian stuffed Albion on the third down earlier, but gave up the fourth down. Here's the third down again, this one from 10, 11 yards away at the Adrian College 23, third and 11. Lavelle stands alone in the shotgun. Claps his hands, takes the snap. Adrian rushes four. Lavelle looking left side into the end zone, no one home. It falls incomplete, and now it's a fourth and long for Albion, and we'll see if they're going to try a field goal here. Yeah, one thing that was interesting, that pass downfield intended target was Aiden Adams. It looked like Bogan up, like got a handful of his jersey as he was trying to separate, but luckily for Adrian, no flag flies, and this is going to set up a 40-yard field goal. This would be something for Gerwinski if he can cash in. The lefty lines up, puts foot to leather, and has the distance, and it's wide to the right. He missed the kick. So the Adrian defense holds, gets the turnover on the missed field goal and some good offensive position. Starting to see that big M, the big M-O roll toward the Adrian College sideline here. That's a great stop on third down and then the fourth down missed kick. Yeah, Logan Gerwinski had the power behind that, had the distance, just hooked it wide right. Bulldog fans, we're going to... Dig deep into your memory banks. Last year, Trine here at Docking Stadium had a kick going that direction. They were up late trying to extend the lead. They missed the kick, gave Adrian a chance. The Bulldogs ultimately lost that football game. But kicks to that direction have been trouble times in the past for visitors here at Adrian College. 5.02 to go, third quarter. Lopez Fakes the short pass, thrown up deep, caught by Cole Seslar. Inside Albion territory, he's down at the 43. No flags on the play, just a big time throw and catch from number six to number two, and the dogs are in business. What a catch by Sessler here as we look at it again. That's a gutsy throw, it's a fake screen. Seslar just breaks open. Here's another pass out to Lajuan Paris. Paris steps out of bounds after a short pickup. And back to that long pass, Calvin. Yeah, great route running by Sessler. Finds a pocket of space right around the 50-yard line and able to reel it in. Sessler getting some more targets with the absence of Ben Koloski, who's out for the year with injury, and he's came up big with a couple of nice receptions today. Give Paris a gain of two on the quick catch and run three receivers to the left for Adrian one to the right Lopez in the shotgun will take the snap feels pressure early throws middle what a catch by Paris he got up and made the catch it's a bulldog first and ten if he didn't make that catch he'd be making a tackle because that had interception written all over it great focus by the young wide receiver yeah Paris able to secure that football after he bobbled it momentarily take a hit from Canfield and hold on to it. First down, Adrian at the Albion 40, rather 31 yard line. 3 and 45 to go, third quarter. 21 7, Albion. It's a run for Tyler Poyer. Poyer gets through one tackle. 
forces his way to the 25 yard line and it'll be a second down and four to go. Like we said, there's life here at Docking Stadium. Once Adrian got in the end zone, you know, sort of broke the dam open. You know, Adrian playing good defense on the last drive, moving the ball here again. If they can get this thing in the end zone, Docking Stadium could come to life here. And that was catch number six for Paris on the day he eclipses 50 yards receiving. 3.06 to go, third quarter. Lopez to throw. Lopez feels pressure, rolling left. Lopez throws across his body, and it's incomplete. Threw it out of bounds. Brings up a third down and four to go at the Albion 25. You could see Lopez motioning. He wanted either Sessler or Townsend to break off their route and head deep to the end zone, but I don't think they were looking in Lopez's direction while he was signaling, and you know, you like to see that from the Adrian quarterback. Instead of forcing a play that isn't there, he just got rid of it out of bounds. The Albion defensive lineman applying pressure was Nick Fannin, 36 on the play. The senior forcing the freshman to roll out. Big third down here, 2-59 and 59 left third quarter. Lopez, it's a toss play to Tyler Poyer. Poyer cuts it inside. First down, Adrian College inside the 20, down to the Albion 14-yard line. That's a pitch play that Poyer... Saw the cutback lane and shot through the gap. Yeah, you said it. He was heading to the right side initially, and then he saw his opening and just shot the gap with a quick little burst of speed to get the first down. Big third down run for Poyer. Game clock moving now. Two and a half to go, third quarter. Lopez with three receivers left, one right. Townsend is alone on the right if he wants him. Lopez looks left all the way. Rolls left, throws near Pylon, and it is caught! Touchdown! Olajuwon Paris! Into the end zone! Lopez to Paris! It's a one-score football game late third quarter. An awesome catch for number 18. Olajuwon comes alive here. And look at the throw. Lopez rolling out to the right on the run and on the money. Near pylon. Took it from the defensive back. And Lopez might have a new favorite target as Paris finds the end zone. The kick from Alec Miley is up away. It's good. Hope you didn't go away. We have a seven-point football game here at Adrian College. It's Albion 21. It's Adrian 14. Stay right here. We'll be back in 30 on the Adrian College Sports Network. The Adrian College Media Production House provides opportunities for students to learn and grow live on the airwaves, just like Matt Kibbe. I've gotten a chance to create a relationship with coaches and teams and learn more from people instead of trying to teach myself something. I've gotten an opportunity to expand my knowledge of sports, hone in on my skills as a broadcaster, learn about equipment in different ways. You get, a, you get more of a connection with professors as well. Providing opportunities, growing leadership. The Adrian College Media Production House. Thanks for tuning in. Here at Docking Family Stadium, Ian Wendt and Calvin Keyes. This game was 21-0 at the half. Albion was in front. Not anymore. It's 21-14. Two straight touchdown drives for the Bulldog offense. A stop by the Adrian defense on a missed field goal by Albion. An awesome 14-yard pass and catch from Lopez to Paris. Two and 19 to go, third quarter. Ian went Calvin Keys. Nice kick. It will be returnable, though, at the five-yard line to the 10, the 15, the 20. Big hit at the 25, and somehow got through the hit. My goodness, they're hitting now, Calvin. The Albion return man gets up to about the 34-yard line but took a shot on the play. How about the toughness here from Jeray Robinson? Boom. Oof. Got knocked into and able to stay on his feet and scamper to the 34. Special teams has been good for Albion in the return department today, and another nice return that time from Robinson. Out to the 34-yard line. Adrian forced a field goal attempt on the last drive. It was missed. They're out here again. 2-11 to go, third quarter. 21-14, Britons. 
Adrian shows four across the front. Lavelle to throw a quick out pass. Riker Bidwell forces the receiver inside. Now cuts outside. Tackled after a short game, but they're going to get a flag on the tackle. It's going to be a face mask, I believe, on Adrian's 34. And that is Bogue and Knopp as the Albion receiver is slow to get up as number two, Robinson. So I believe it was Ganop. So the short pass and the face mask at the end. They called 35. That's his brother Gage Ganop. It's going to move it up past the 50 to the Adrian 49. At the base of the block A that Bruiser the Bulldog is leaning on here on Kapnick Field. Two men in the backfield, the quarterback, Lavelle, along with his running back. It's Price Jones. Jones will get a fake. Lavelle throws low, and it's incomplete. Forcing the issue was Adrian's 34. Bo Ganap, the intended receiver, was Dylan Dennison. Yeah, nice play by Bo Ganap there, and Dennison probably would have reeled that pass in if not for the contact coming in. Second and long for Albion. Clock stops a minute 44 here in the third. Two receivers on a side for Lavelle. Claps his hands. He will get the snap. Price Jones gets it through the middle, gets stuffed for a short gain. Big time play for Adrian's 99. Le'Veon Leverett. Great job in that interior of the defensive line. Nowhere to go for the Albion running back. How about the big fella, Avion Leverett, tracking his man down and bringing him down. Third and nine. Listen to this crowd, Ian. They believe. This sideline believes as well. Third and nine for the Britons. Lavelle looks to the sideline, now looks on. One minute, five seconds left. Third quarter, Albion by a touchdown, Lavelle. Bulldogs bring a blitz. He throws it deep. He's got a man. He overthrew him, and it's incomplete. Looking for Dennison again. And Adrian clamps down on defense. Great job, Leverett, on that second down play, forcing a third and long, and the pass incomplete. Albion will punt. Yeah, a rare overthrow from Lavelle. Dennison was wide open. That would have been a momentum killer if he was able to complete that pass. Luckily for Adrian, he, he missed the target for one of the first times we've seen today. Defense. Comes at a good time for the Bulldogs. Defense standing up tall once more. The punt for Albion. It's a pretty good punt. Will be fair caught inside the Adrian College 15 at about the 13-yard line. So 53 seconds left, Calvin, and Adrian has outscored their rival 14-0 here in the third quarter. Uh, what's changed? I'm not sure. I Besides think it, it everything. Starts with, <laughs> I think everything changed. Yeah, you're right in that respect. I think it's really one play at a time, and... That, that first drive really gave Adrian some confidence. They were able to complete some passes. Elijah Juan Paris was good. Tyler Poyer was good. And now the defense is, you know, making some physical plays, actually bringing their man down on the first contact instead of letting them bounce off for extra yardage. First and 10, Adrian at their own 14. Down 21-14. Pass out, caught by Paris. Elijah Juan Paris, room to the 20. Gets rocked at the 23-yard line. Big time hit for Larry Platt. Paris with another catch on the quick catch and run. It's a nice job to hold on to that football by a yeah. freshman receiver. Nice catch by Paris. Platt plasters him. I think that one registered on the Richter scale. My <laughs> goodness. As Look Paris, out. As Paris was being taken down from behind, Platt finished the job. It is a nine-yard reception. Second and nine for Adrian. Lopez in the quarterback. Poyer the running back. Give us to Tyler Poyer. Poyer navigating through the middle. Has an Adrian College first down. And with nine seconds left in this third quarter, the clock will start on the referee's signal. And we're heading to the fourth quarter. And I don't know how many people watching or listening thought this would be a seven-point game going to the fourth quarter. And here we are at Docking Family Stadium. It's Al it, it is Adrian and Albion coming down to the wire. It's Albion 21, Adrian 14. We'll be back with fourth quarter action 
here on the Adrian College Sports Network. Continue to take pride and learn from Asim Han's leadership today. Good afternoon, football fans, and welcome back to Adrian College. I'm Ian Went. That's Calvin Keyes. A 14-0 third quarter puts Adrian right back in this football game. It's 21 to 14. Adrian has the football on a first and ten at their own 28-yard line. Lopez, the quarterback, he will look to throw. Feels pressure, fakes it. Now throws it deep. It's too far and it's intercepted. No, he's out of bounds. Wow, what a break for Adrian. And there's a flag on the play as Keontae Townsend was the intended receiver. So this may go from possible interception to incompletion, and we may see a pass interference, but we'll check the call. Ooh, I don't know if he was out there. Hey, I, His feet looked into me. And the call is holding on Albion, so... Won't matter even, either way. Right, even if it were an interception, the holding wipes out the interception that it looked like it was. The officials say incomplete, but they also say holding on the Albion defense. That's going to move the ball 10 yards, and it's an Adrian first and 10 at the 38-yard uh, line. Lopez heating up here in the second half. We don't have to drive quickly if you're Adrian. Let's hand the football off. Let's not risk it with any long throws down the field. And there is a run for... Tyler Poyer, the leading running back this afternoon. He has two yards over left tackle. That's where Mr. Nate Bennett hangs out. Also, Jack Sosela. We're going to miss those guys next year, Ian. Even though this hasn't been, you know, the season that those guys would have wanted, I think they've just brought it week in and week out, bring a lot of leadership, a lot of physicality to this offensive line. A very veteran group up front for interim head coach Harry Bailey. They get Albion to jump, it's a free play for Lopez. Lopez looking deep for Townsend. Key separation, oh, and it's incomplete. Oh, just went right through his hands at the Albion 25. Lopez took a shot, he's down and he's grabbing his knee in pain. He's down at the Adrian 30 yard line and Lopez, he didn't get hit when he threw the football so maybe Calvin, he landed awkwardly but Lopez is down and in some great pain Maybe at his own 31-yard line. I think someone might have crashed in late. Maybe one of his own linemen was pushed on top of him. Oh, and man. They're, they're all huddling around the Adrian quarterback. They be in the training staff here at Adrian. We're going to take a 60-second timeout as they're looking at the Quarterback Mark Lopez and Calvin, I heard Shay LaRue say, it's just a cramp, and we hope it is. We're going to take a 60-second break regardless. It's Albion 21, Adrian 14. We'll be back here on ACSN. We got to cut it. And we're back here on the Adrian College Sports Network. Ian Wentz and Calvin Keyes. Brady Raymond is now in at quarterback for Adrian College. Mark Lopez went down at the end of the play. The offsides against Albion puts this at a second down and three. The freshman from Pinckney not ready for the snap. 
takes it anyway and falls forward. There's a flag on the play here. And likely against the offense, and that's going to put them back to a second down and eight. And not everybody was set before the snap. So Brady Raymond goes right back to the bench, and you know my little investigative work listening to Shayla Root say it's just a cramp. That appears to be the case for Adrian quarterback Mark Lopez, who is back in this football game. His team down seven, eight yards to go. They scrimmage from the 40. And now the officials stop play. They're calling Lopez off the field. Brady Raymond, the backup quarterback, is going to head back out there. Is that because technically they didn't run a play? Mark has to go out for one play. And since the penalty wiped out the play that would have been for Brady, Raymond is in the game at quarterback. Takes the snap. He's going to hand off to Tyler Poyer. Room up the middle for Poyer. Nice blocking, and that's a gain of nine and an Adrian College. First and ten. Call it ten. Calvin... They know we're going to run. They know who's going to get the ball, and they couldn't stop him. Tyler Poyer right down Main Street. I don't think they've been able to stop him all day. You can only contain him, and he heads to center field. Now Mark Lopez re-enters the football game. From the 50-yard line, 13 and 41 left, fourth quarter. It's Albion 21, Adrian 14, and driving. Lopez. Feeling the pressure early, Mark throws near side out of the reach of Keontae Townsend. Took a hit as he threw the football and the Albion defender in like a flash. They brought the corner blitz. That was Larry Reed, number three. Nice job by Reed to force that throw from Lopez. Nearly found Townsend on the near sideline, but the pass was a little bit away from the target. And you mentioned it at the start of this drive, Calvin. There's plenty of time. You don't have to... (laughs) Abandon that run game that at times has been very good. We'll see what they do on a second down and 10 at the 50-yard line. Three receivers out to the right. Crumsey, Paris, and Seslar. The pass is over to Crumsey, and it's tipped at the line and incomplete. Hit right at the line. Incomplete. Clock will stop with 13 and 27 left, and the third down and 10 upcoming. Orlando Daniels. So the ruling is that the forward pass got tipped backwards by Orlando Daniels, who Daniels having himself a day. Another big pass breakup. Third and ten. Can't utilize TP on this down. We'll see how healthy Mark Lopez here on this upcoming play. Third and ten at the 50. Ian Went, Calvin Keys with you at Adrian College. Here's the snap for Lopez. Lopez throws short, tipped at the line, incomplete. And the Adrian fans looking for a flag on Elijah Juan Paris, who was the intended receiver, fell incomplete. The pass was tipped ever so slightly at the line by Albion, and Adrian will punt. Yeah, Lopez releases this ball, and I want to say that was Daniels again that got the mitts up and tipped it away. Regardless, pass could not be held onto by Elijah Juan Paris. It would have been about a three or four yard gain if Paris would have caught the ball. Samuel Lafada will punt. Here's a low snap picked up by Lafada. It's blocked. Blocked and scooped up at the 32. And he's going to run in for an Albion touchdown. Punt blocked. Picked up. Scoop and score for Cameron Moore. And Albion scores the special teams touchdown. As the snap back to Lafada was low. Rolled back to him for a couple of feet. And the lefty had it blocked cleanly. And more with a scoop and score, and it's now 27 to 14. Yeah, just a bad snap that Lafada, Lafada had to go down to grab, and Albion's been close to blocking punts all day in reality, and this time it's finally realized, and huge play just when Adrian looked like they might be able to come back in this game. Albion's going to extend their lead to two touchdowns. Gruwinski to try the extra point. Snap, hold, and the kick. They're all good. Albion has once again doubled up their lead. It's 28 to 14 on a blocked punt. Scoop and score of 32 yards. And Adrian needs an answer offensively. 13-13 to go fourth quarter. 
We'll be right back in 30 seconds, and you are tuned in to Bulldog Football right here on the Adrian College Sports Network. The Adrian College Media Production House provides opportunities for students to learn and grow live on the airwaves, just like Matt Kibbe. I've gotten a chance to create a relationship with coaches and teams and learn more from people instead of trying to teach myself something. I've gotten an opportunity to expand my knowledge of sports, hone in on my skills as a broadcaster, learn about equipment in different ways. You get, a, you get more of a connection with professors as well. Providing opportunities, growing leadership. The Adrian College Media Production House. Thanks for tuning in. Ian Wendt, Calvin Keyes on the Adrian College Sports Network. Adrian special teams give up the score. It's a punt block, scoop and score, blocked and recovered by Albion's Cameron Moore. Puts the score at 28-14 Albion here at Adrian. Here is the ensuing kickoff. Will be returnable for Crumsey inside his five. He's had a great return so far. Crumsey right side to the 25 up to the 30. Gets dragged down right around there. So Mark Lopez and the Adrian College offense back out once again. It might not be Mark Lopez as I see Brady Raymond in the offensive huddle. But uh, Calvin, the offense up until that uh, last set of downs moved the ball about 30 some yards and Looked pretty good at times. Yeah, driving pretty well and just comes down to a special teams miscue or poor snap and a great block made by Moore as he grabs it, returns it to the house, and we are going to see the Texan Mark Lopez back out there. I didn't see Mark. He was probably behind an offensive lineman. He's going to give to Tyler Poyer, the running back through the middle, and he's going to get up to the 34-yard line. Tackled by Albion's 36, Nick Fannin. Well, I would say that Mark Lopez is probably an easy guy to miss in a crowd, standing about 5'9", 5'10", so I don't fault you there. Lopez looking deep left side, going for Crumsey, adjust to the football, and he caught it! Inside the Albion 35-yard line, the speedster. Not just quick, he's got some hands on him as well. Lopez let it fly. Big time catch and an Adrian first and 10. This is incredible by Crumsey. Great throw. Lopez finds his man and Crumsey beats out the defensive back, James Bloomfield. Here's another attempt going near side. Townsend caught it. He's going to walk in the end zone. He was out of bounds, but he got pushed out of bounds. Goes back in on his own, and just like that, <laughs> it's a 33-yard touchdown pass from Lopez to Townsend. That touchdown right now will stand as Townsend was shoved out of bounds. He came back in on his own as soon as he could, and the touchdown's going to count, and it's 28-20. to Lopez to Townsend, incredible. Great job by Key Calvin to finish the play and go into the end zone. What, what a heads up play by the senior wide receiver. You know, I was laughing because there was just an awkward silence. Nobody knew, is this going to be a touchdown or not? We get the decision. It's Townsend taking it to the house. If you get forced out of bounds and come back in in a timely manner, you can be the first to touch the ball. And Keontae Townsend caught it and ran it into the end zone. A 33-yard touchdown pass from Mark Lopez to Keontae Townsend. The extra point by Alec Miley is up and good. We have a seven-point game once again. It's Albion 28, Adrian 21. We will be right back to Docking Family Stadium after this 30-second message. You're tuned in to Bulldog Football on the Adrian College Sports Network. If there was one word I was going to use to describe the communication arts program at Adrian College, it would be unique. Students find themselves on the radio, in front of and behind the camera, and directing their own programs. Students learn in a personalized environment that sets them up for a world of opportunities. Are you ready for your moment in the limelight? To learn more about the Rush Communications Center and Adrian College's communications program by visiting adrian.edu today. Ian Wendt, Calvin Keyes on the Adrian College Sports Network and the Bulldog kickoff for Jack Boyke will be returnable inside the Albion College 5. Cut into the edge to the 20, looking for a block, has it up near the 30, 
and these kickoff return units have done a very good job. Albion with the football here. Calvin, we've seen quite a bit the last couple of minutes. We saw a punt block return for a touchdown by the Britons, and then a wacky 33-yard touchdown pass from Lopez to Townsend after a great pass from Lopez to Crumsey. Yeah, one thing that I think the interim head coach for the Bulldogs, Harry Bailey, has done well is instilled some belief and some resiliency in this team. It'd be really easy for a lot of teams to roll over after you've done all that work to come back in the game, and then a, a punting miscue puts you behind the eight ball. They respond with a big drive, Ian. Keontae Townsend on a wacky touchdown passing play. You're right. They're, they're, they've been lacking some responses this season. Here's a run through the middle. Stop for a low, low gain. Maybe none. That's really the first time we've talked to about number eight, Waitis Ashman. Comes up and makes the stop from his linebacker safety position. Coming in on the blitz. Look at Ashman just creeping in. They open up the door for him. He comes sprinting in. Tackle for loss. You can't you keep an eye on Ashman next time. I don't yeah, know. You, you can't let that man in your house. Here he comes again. He'll raid your fridge. Here's <laughs> Ashman. Fake the blitz. He'll drop back. Lavelle throwing in the flat, tipped, and it's incomplete at the line of scrimmage. Strap and the play in. made. Darrell Washington. Nice job for Washington, and now this Bulldog defense, they have pitched a shutout in the second half as the defensive end gets his big Bulldog paw on that pass. Washington capitalizes there on the low pass as he gets his left hand to it. Another big third and ten. The fans are standing for the first time here this afternoon, making noise for their defense. Lavelle, the Albion cornerback, will take the snap. Adrian rushes four. Lavelle throws left side, caught. First down, Britons up to the 50 and inside Adrian territory. And tackled was the wide receiver, Kai Bristow, as he was wide open, stopped at the Adrian 47. Just found some room behind those linebackers. I'll tell you what, Lavelle is special, doesn't flinch, leaves it in there for his receiver. And that's reeled in for the first down by Chris, or Kai Bristow, excuse me. Lavelle will take. He will hand off middle. Some room there for the running back up over the 35, down to the 33, maybe the 32, was number nine, Colby Taylor Browning. And there's an Adrian player down at the 35. Did you grab the number? It's, I think that's Sean Tolbert. Is it Sean Tolbert? And he is up quickly. And Calvin, that's a, that's a guy we haven't mentioned a lot as he has played some safety here this season. So he gets checked out on his way to the Adrian College bench. Great athletic trainer, Jamie Fetter, does an awesome job. And checking on Tolbert now. And, you know, that is a bit of a loss. Tolbert's had a quiet day. Usually we're talking about an interception or something of that nature, but, you know, he's had his hands full trying to contain this receiving core for the Britons and done a pretty nice job. Just under 11 to play, fourth quarter. Albion 28, Adrian 21, and there's some movement up front. Shea LaRue moved early, and then the offensive lineman, 75, Jordan Vitajewski, moved. And this will likely be against the Bulldog defense. And Shea tried to jump that snap count. You know, if he did that and got back before the Albion player moved, there's no harm, no foul. But since the right tackle jumped, they enforced the penalty first and five. Uncharacteristic mistake by LaRue. I think that's maybe the first flag we've seen against him this season. Riker Bidwell showing some pressure from his linebacker position. Here he comes on a blitz. Lavalle's going to throw behind it, looking near side. Catch made, slips a tackle at the 20. Down to the 15, near the 10, is the Albion College receiver. That's 88, Devin Fridley-Bell. Got through the Adrian College tackle of number 22. That's Diavion Wright, the freshman. And I thought Fridley-Bell was going to have his bell rung on this play. It's just a bit of a miscue there. Kingston Blackman's got to go low to bring down his man there instead of going high. First down, Albion run through the middle. Good for a couple is Philip Jones Price. He's down to the Adrian College seven. Ten and a half to go, rather ten minutes to go, fourth quarter. Albion 28, Adrian 21. The only Albion touchdown this half so far has been a punt block return. 
And the Bulldog linebacker, 34, that is Bo Mr. Knopp. Knopp. Yeah, Bo was down on the near sideline at the Adrian 5. As the athletic training staff looks at Bo, down at the five-yard line. We'll take a quick 30-second timeout. Bulldogs backs against the wall here. Can they stand up and make another play? We'll find out next. We'll be back in 30 on the Adrian College Sports Network. The Adrian College Media Production House provides opportunities for students to learn and grow live on the airwaves, just like Matt Kibbe. I've gotten a chance to create a relationship with coaches and teams and learn more from people instead of trying to teach myself something. I've gotten an opportunity to expand my knowledge of sports, hone in on my skills as a broadcaster, and learn about equipment in different ways. You get, a, you get more of a connection with professors as well. Providing opportunities, growing leadership. The Adrian College Media Production House. Thanks for tuning in. Good afternoon and welcome back to Adrian College. Ganap is up and walking under his own power on the Adrian College sideline. The Bulldog linebacker checks out of this football game. It's defense looking at a second and six from their own seven-yard line. Albie with the football up by seven. Lavelle, the quarterback, takes the shotgun snap. Gives. No, he kept it. The fake running to the 10, and he's cut under and tackled in the backfield by Sean Tolbert. And there's also a flag on the play at the Adrian College 8. This will be a hold, and I believe against Albion, and now a decision time for interim head coach Harry Bailey if he wants to accept this penalty or not. We need to hear the penalty first. It is against Albion. And the holding call against the wide receiver, 88, Fridley Bell. They will enforce the penalty, and that's a great tackle, Calvin, by Sean Tolbert, a guy we haven't seen uh, really a lot this afternoon until that play. Yeah, great hustle by Tolbert to get across and just trip up Lavelle as he was trying to roll out of the pocket to the right side. He, tuck it, he tucked it and ran. Tolbert read the play perfectly. Bulldogs running that one high safety. It has been Brent Allen. Allen's on the sideline, helmet in hand. Sean Tolbert is the lone Bulldog back deep on the defensive side. Penalty puts the ball at the Adrian 17. Nine and a half to go, fourth quarter. 28-21, Albion. Britain's with the football, Lavelle. Waits in the backfield, will take the snap. Fake a run, roll back to the right. There's a screen set up. And he's going to make a move down to the 10, cuts inside to the 6, and that's some shifty move in there for a talented wide receiver, Fridley Bell, just a sophomore, but picked up about 10 yards on the screen. Fridley Bell just so elusive. Look at this, starts from his own 15, works his way down to the 5, falling forwards. Credit Devin Fridley Bell. That's just nice stick to itiveness there to make something out of seemingly nothing for the Britons. It is a third down and five to go. Ball at the Adrian College six. 8.35 left, fourth quarter. Ian Went, Calvin Keys with you from Adrian College. Three receivers left, one right. Fridley Bell alone to the right. Lavelle looking middle, throws, and it's caught at the end zone. Touchdown, Albion College right through the middle is number 11 with the catch, Dylan Dennison. And Albion puts their two-score lead back up on the board. That's a good throw by Lavelle, right on the money. The Britons have had a response to Adrian's pushback in this second half. It starts and ends with Luke Lavelle. Just great accuracy. And I think just a little bit too easy for Dennison there as you know Tolbert with a little bit of soft coverage. Made had it some easy. Fumbled with snap. The, with the extra point, and they're going to throw it, and it's going to be incomplete. Some issues with the snap, as you said, Calvin. And there may be a bigger problem at the Adrian College goal line as Wadis Ashman is slow to get up. He's going to rip his helmet off and walk toward the sideline. He's under some obvious pain, but he goes to the sideline. So a botched extra point for Albion College. We'll keep it right here. 8 and 23 left, fourth quarter. It's now 34 to 21, and there's been a couple kicking problems for the Britons. They have a missed field goal and now a, an issue on the extra point. I'd love to see that extra point again. It was Evan Finnis, the long snapper, who sent a low uh, snap that just skipped off the ground. Makes it really difficult for the holder, Chris Bowman, who's also, also the punter for this Albion team to get things set for Gerwinski. And, you know, plenty of work to be done before we have this conversation, but 
you know, you hope always that those extra points don't come back to bite you in the butt because it's free points, and then if you don't make them, it kind of throws a wrench in, in your plans offensively. Lucky for Albion, they don't have to worry about that right now with a two-score lead. Their first offensive touchdown of the second half. Here's a high, short kick. Crumsey with a running start, caught it at the 11. Crumsey looking middle up to the 25-yard line. And this Adrian College offense that's found life in the second half. Quarterbacked by Mark Lopez. Couple touchdowns here this afternoon. One to Paris and one to Townsend. Needs to find something here with 8.18 to go fourth quarter. This is a big drive and your playbook gets limited a little bit here with not a lot of time to work with. Trying to get in the end zone twice. And you have to imagine that you can't give the football back to Albion because they're just going to look to chew the clock and, and wear this game down. So pivotal drive here for the outcome of the football game. Bulldogs have shown some explosive abilities on the offensive side. Look for something here. Lopez fakes a quick pass, now throws deep, going up for Sesslar. Jump ball, he caught it at the 45 of Albion. Cuts back to the 40, 35. Sesslar down to the 30 inside of it. That's another big play for the Bulldog offense. Nice throw and adjustment to the football by Seslar, and there is no quit in this team today. Lopez has been legit. Look at this throw. He's got a cannon for an arm. Sessler open, got up for it, and he sizzles down the field, getting all the way to the 30-yard line. Beat Bobby Willis in coverage. It's a first and 10, Adrian, at the Albion 29. Lopez will take the direct snap, throws sideline, and it's a... Near catch, they say incomplete to Townsend. Hit the ground is what the call is. As he went diving for it, and he was covered once again. This was by Bobby Willis. Thought Townsend may have been dragged down before the ball got there, and you could certainly argue it was very close. Second and 10 for Adrian. So we're starting to get a little more cloud cover here this afternoon. The blazing sun is still there but a little more faint. Second down and 10 for Lopez. Mark steps up and gets oh dropped. Oh my goodness. That's a big time hit in the Bulldog backfield for Jack Olnick. Lopez got rocked on the play. Yeah, Alex Olnick delivers a haymaker to Lopez here. He's just gonna charge right through. Nobody protecting him. Bam. Just took one arm to take down Lopez. Goodness. 10-yard loss. Glad Mark's okay. Jeez. I well, call it 7-yard loss. Third down and 17. Britain's rush 4 and a 5th late. Lopez throwing deep left side. Nobody home. And falls incomplete. He was looking for Elijah on Paris. And with 6.55 left, 4th quarter, you're looking at a 4th and go for it situation. You just don't want it to be 4th and 17. Yeah, this is a tough one. And this isn't technically the game, but it feels like this is to stay alive for Adrian. 6.55 left, fourth quarter, fourth and 17 from the Albion 36. Lopez from the shotgun will take this snap. Four men rush for Albion. Feels pressure, steps up. He won't get a pass off. He'll get sacked. Down back out right. Yep, back outside the 40. Lopez never threw that football. As Albion rushes four and they get home, they twist around and get to the young Bulldog quarterback. Albion takes the football first and 10 with 6 and 42 left. Pocket just collapsed on him there. Lopez nowhere to go. Credit right for the sack. First and 10 Britons at their own 42. Now it'll be on the Adrian Rush defense to slow this thing down, give your offense another chance. Bulldog defense looking for a takeaway as well. One here would be huge. It's 34-21 Albion with the football at their own 42. Laval, the quarterback, takes the shotgun snap, gives it off to the middle, spinning through a couple of tacklers is the Britain's running back, Jones Price. That's a three-yard carry. Riker Bidwell 
one of the many Bulldogs in on the tackle. Under six and a half to go. Fourth quarter, Ian Wentz, Calvin Keyes with you on the call. Engineering our game this afternoon, Laura Rutkowski and Raven, uh, Raven, Reagan Petrowski. Close. She doesn't care. It's a second down and long. Oh, she cares. I'm sorry. <laughs> Six on five to go. Lavelle will take. He'll throw. Catch by Dennison. Hit inbounds and tackled. It's a nice job on the defensive backfield for Adrian's 22, Kingston Blackman. And it's now a third down and about five to go. Four and a half, maybe five. It's nice to see Bo Ganop back on the field. He was out with an injury earlier. Adrian looking for a stop here. It's a third down, they call it four. Five and a half to go, fourth quarter. Down by 13, they need a stop. Lavelle, he's alone in the backfield. Five out wide, he'll take it. Shea LaRue flushes him out left, throws deep, going for a kill shot, and it's incomplete. A.J. Pipkins knocks down the pass. And the clock will stop with 5.12 to go. And we will see Albion's punt team come on. So the Bulldog defense does hold on a three and out. Yeah, Pipkins couldn't quite get his sights on it. It was kind of awkward there from his body positioning, but almost picked it off. Adrian does have all three timeouts left. So if you're looking big picture, go down and score quick. Use the timeouts on defense next time and see what you can do. Here's the Albion punt. Bulldogs nearly get to it. It's going to bounce at the 20 and roll to the 16, 15 yard line as the Britons punter there, 41, Chris Bowman, puts it down at the 14. Still some time here. Again, it's got to be probably some looks down the field here if you want to have a chance. I mean, really, everybody who's been involved in the deep passing game has made plays. If you go across the line, Elijah on Paris, Cole Seslar, Chris Crumsley, Keontae Townsend, of course, Lopez with trust in a somewhat veteran group. Adrian down by 13, 5.02 left in this fourth quarter. Ian Went, Calvin Keyes on the call. Bulldogs need 13 points in five minutes. Lopez will take the shotgun snap, steps up, throws right side. He's going for the tight end, overthrown that time for 87, Ryan Brumley. Throw well over his head. Second and 10. Not anywhere close to Brumley there. Couldn't reach it. Second and 10 scenario now. Four and 57 left. Lopez today, 20 of 37. 327 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. He will take the snap. Throws short, too high for Keontae Townsend. Townsend, a little five-yard turnaround, and Lopez tossed it over his outstretched arm. Yeah, just too much mustard on it there. Uncatchable ball for Townsend. They need their own 24. Four and 54 to go, fourth quarter. From Adrian College. Down 34 to 21 with the football. They need 86 yards to score. Lopez will step up and he'll get dropped for a sack. And it seems like more often than not, if it's an obvious passing situation, Calvin, the Britons get in that backfield in a hurry. Pressure comes from Michael Pruchnik. Able to get through there, get by the offensive lineman. That was Andre Williams who was trying to block him. Pruchnik gets a sack. And this Albion defensive front has been all over Lopez today. Four and 47 left fourth quarter. It's a fourth and about 15. Lafada will punt again from his own end zone. Off the side of his foot, angling toward the sideline. He's going to bounce at the Adrian 40 and roll up to the 44 and a half where it will be touched up. 
So with 4 and 30 left fourth quarter, a third quarter for Adrian where the offense uh, really moved the ball and put some points on the board. Have not seen it here in the fourth as much. Albion really responded. They cleaned things up and yeah, their offense got it done and made some big plays. Laval, the Albion quarterback with 244 yards. He's 19 of 29. Rushing the ball, uh, it's really been by committee. Jones Price with 55 yards. And Taylor with 52 yards rushing. First and 10, Albion at the Adrian College, 44. Thirty-four, twenty-one, Albion. They're going to add some more time onto the clock here before this ball is snapped. They reset it to four and twenty-five. Laval will stand in the shotgun. He has Jones Price off to his right. The snap back. It's going to be a run right through the middle and met in the hole. Big tackle for Big Randall Broom. And you hear broom Those from the booze. home fans. Those are not boos. Boy, and he's shown some plays like that throughout his Bulldog career. Just shed right through the block of the right tackle and made the play in the backfield. Just a bruising bash from broom up the middle. Under four to play. Adrian down to 13 here, 34 to 21. Interim coach Harry Bailey has three timeouts in his back pocket should he want to use them. Second and 11 for Albion at the Adrian 45. It's a quarterback keeper for Lavelle and tackled in the backfield and dropped. Nice run coverage by the Adrian defensive back. That's 22, Kingston Blackman, and now Adrian will call the timeout. That's two plays out on the edge on the rush made by Blackman in the run game. Yeah, Blackman's really been the king of those open field tackles. Gets another good one there. Three minutes and 30 seconds left in this fourth quarter. Adrian College calling a timeout ahead of a third down and long. And Calvin, uh, this being the, the eighth game of the season, Bulldogs coming in at a one and six mark. Everybody knows that coming in. Uh, and, and some of our games this year, you know, when one wheel falls off, We've seen, while well, the whole car falls apart, instead of, hey, pull over, let's change this tire, get the donut on, and keep moving down the road. Uh, despite being down 13, I think we're, we're seeing that from the team uh, this afternoon. Yeah, I think just that, that pushback, right, the fight, we're not going to go away. We're going to stick around. We're going to try and make some plays in battle. And that's what we've seen today. Bulldog defense looking to make one more stop here. Three and 33 left. Third down and 15 for the Britons. The Albion quarterback Laval hands it off right side. There's some big time space and they're gonna pick up a first and 10. Sliding down in bounds is Colby Taylor Browning. Pick up of 20 yards on the simple off tackle run. There was just nobody on that second level as Adrian sold out that rush to the middle. Yeah, as soon as he got through the, the first wave, it was smooth sailing for Taylor Browning. Three minutes. Now left in the fourth quarter. Bulldogs do not use a timeout, and Albion will take their time getting to the line. Under 10 to go on this play clock. Under three to go in the game. 34-21 Albion. And it's a run through the middle and Shea LaRue grabs the running back up at the top of the shoulders, drags him down. Colby Taylor Browning once more. And once more, we have an Adrian College timeout called by Harry Bailey, the interim head coach here at Adrian College. We will take a timeout with Coach Bailey. It's Albion 34, Adrian 21, 2 and 42 left in this fourth quarter. You're tuned in to Bulldog Football on the Adrian College Sports Network.
Ian Wendt, Calvin Keyes on the Adrian Collins Sports Network. As the Bulldogs call the timeout with 2 and 42 to play. It's Albion 34, Adrian 21. This game was 21-0, Britons at the half. Bulldogs made it 21 to 14 and later 28 to 21. They now trail by 13. They call the timeout. They run right through the gut down to the Bulldog 30 for Colby Taylor Browning. And we'll see Adrian's final timeout called here with 2 and 35 left in this fourth quarter. Well, looking at the road ahead, Adrian will stay home for their final game here at Adrian College of the season. They will take on the conference's best as Alma College comes to town. Perfect 8-0 on the season. Will be senior day here at Docking Family Stadium. And uh, they're welcoming in a very solid club in Alma who won big today. And uh, after that contest next week at 5 o'clock, I'll head up to Olivet, University of Olivet. Is that the game where you'll be? Uh, I won't be here next uh, you'll week. You'll be. Oh, you I, won't be here next week. I will. Okay. I will not be here next week. You'll be with me at, at Olivet, though. Yeah. We'll make the trip up there. Sorry to abandon you for the Bulldogs' toughest test of the season. That's okay. We'll manage. Hopefully, the seniors show out. They're going to need to for that game. That they will. Adrian called their final timeout. Two thirty-five left, fourth quarter, third and six for Albion from the Adrian thirty. Lavelle, the quarterback. Bulldogs sell out on the rush. Handoff, looking to get to that edge. He's going to get close to it. Knocked out. In bounds is the Albion running back, 23, Curtis Hamilton. And there was a flag on the play. Right at the line of scrimmage in the middle of that offensive line. A little bit extracurricular. And the call looks to be holding. We'll wait for a signal. And the holding is against Albion. Coach Bailey will decline the call. And it will bring up a fourth down. And the Albion offense is staying right where they are on the field. It'll be fourth and six at the Adrian 30. Calvin, this game not over yet, but a first down here. Would likely run out the rest of the clock. Right you are. Adrian out of timeout, so they can't stop the Britons anymore as they look to chew out the remainder of this game. It's going to be a fourth down and call it two. The rush got them to the 26-yard line. And the Albion coaching staff standing right by the linesman, Travis Rundle. And he will take a time out. Albion's first of the half as they lead Adrian here, 34-21. to 21. Fourth and two coming up. We'll be right back in 30 seconds. You're tuned in to Bulldog Football on the Adrian College Sports Network. The Adrian College Media Production House provides opportunities for students to learn and grow live on the airwaves, just like Matt Kibbe. I've gotten a chance to create a relationship with coaches and teams and learn more from people instead of trying to teach myself something. I've gotten an opportunity to expand my knowledge of sports, hone in on my skills as a broadcaster, and learn about equipment in different ways. You get, a, you get more of a connection with professors as well. Providing opportunities, growing leadership. The Adrian College Media Production House. Thanks for tuning in. Ian Wendt, Calvin Keyes here on the Adrian College Sports Network. 34-21 Albion, fourth down and two at the 26-yard line. Albion called their first timeout. If Adrian wants to pull off a major comeback and a major upset, it's going to start here on a fourth down and two at the 26-yard line. The quarterback, Lavelle, stands in the shotgun. Is running back off to his right. Lavelle will take. Give middle. Plowing toward the line. He did not get it, Calvin. A huge tackle for Riker Bidwell. And Taylor Browning on the initial call did not get a first down. It should be an Adrian College football just inside the 25. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, Albion's defense already coming out onto the field. Take another look here. That is the call. There is some life here at Talking Family Stadium. So Albion risking it all, going for it on fourth and two. They rush it through the middle, and a run that would have ended the game instead extends it, and the Bulldog offense 
with some life here late. Big tackle. Bidwell did well there to stop the runner short of the line to gain. That's a great job by you. That's some elite analyst work. I appreciate it. I, I've learned from the best this season. <laughs> First and 10 at the 25. Lopez looking for some magic. Albion rushes four. Lopez throwing deep right side. It's too far and it's intercepted. There will be no magic on this play. And on this day, we'll go to Albion College as the pass is intercepted by number five, Bobby Lewis. And the Albion defense picks off the young freshman, Lopez. And that will do it for the game this afternoon. Just an overthrow. We was looking for Keontae Townsend. That'll send fans to the exits here as Lopez took a shot downfield, which you have to do with two minutes left, down by 13. But that should just about settle this one. Yeah, not, not I mean, Lopez has had just about a career day in terms of yardage, but Calvin, on some of the throws, they've been a little high, right? He's been a little antsy with the ball. I, I don't know what it is, but there have been a, a handful that have just been a little high over the receiver's hands and heads. That one intercepted, and Albion will take the snap from under center and go to a knee. Inconsistent, I think, is the word to describe Lopez's play today. Made some great throws at times. Made some poor throws at times, and that was one of the poor throws. Hill on the day with over 325 yards passing. Yeah, so you look at it and you say, wow, he made some really nice plays overall, gained a lot of yards. It's a big reason why Adrian was able to hang with this Albion team, but then I think that, that was his second pick of the day. Threw some interceptions at pivotal moments. You know, got sacked in moment. You'd like to see, I think, heading out of this freshman year for Lopez, Maybe working on some more mobility, being able to get out of the pocket and, and make plays. He made some nice plays on the run, but um, if he can expand his game from just being a pocket passer and hone in some of that accuracy, I think we got a bright future for, for this kid from San Angelo, Texas. Lavelle takes the knee on the second down snap, puts the clock under one minute to go. Be sure to tune in for our post-game show. We talk about this contest, look at the numbers, and look forward to next week as Alma heads down to... Bulldog territory. And that is going to be the final kneel down on the third down, and that's going to expire the rest of this game clock, and Albion will get this victory over Adrian College of a final score, 34-21. to 21. We will take a 60-second break. The postgame show, when we come back, it's a final from Adrian. Albion, 34 Adrian 21. We'll be back in 60 on the Adrian College Sports Network. Ian Went, Calvin Keyes on the Adrian College Sports Network. Bulldogs drop this one to Albion, 34 to 21, the final score as they lose this one here today. And uh, we need to get right into this. Uh, first game for interim head football coach Harry Bailey. And I'll tell you what, Calvin, this, this team got down but they were not out. Uh, there was certainly some fight in this Bulldog team, um, and they got down 21 nothing at half. They came out of the third quarter and said, we're, we're going to throw some punches here and make this a football game, and, and it was. And this was a tight game until there was that uh, blocked punt. 
scoop and score for Albion that took the one score lead and brought it back up to two and uh, teams traded a couple scores in, in the second half but uh, you know we've seen some losses this year but this one felt just a little bit different didn't it yeah still stinks to lose just as much as ever Bulldogs dropped to one and seven but really there is some energy it was fun watching this Bulldog team today you could tell they were playing for each other they continued to play hard despite what the score was throughout the game and that's why the second half became interesting and you sit here thinking you know if you're not down 21 nothing into half and maybe a stronger performance in the first by some of your key players this could have been a very different game but you love the second half response and you love that the Bulldogs came out of the locker room and just resolved to give Albion a run for their money big day statistically throwing the football for the Adrian College freshman quarterback, Mark Lopez, he does end the day with uh, those two interceptions, uh, but uh, very good throwing the ball. His completion percentage right there at 50%. You know, if, if you're Mark, you'd like that a little higher, but the throws he did complete, there they were some deep passes. Yeah, I think the yardage, two touchdowns, and made some nice plays is great. Um, the, the dark side of the coin is, you know, 50% is not great when you're attempting 40 passes. You want to complete more than 20, obviously. And then I think throwing two picks is unfortunate. I think that's about what his average has been every start this season. Um, so nothing terribly new there. Getting sacked six times isn't all on the youngster Lopez, but it certainly makes it detrimental to your success when you're unable to scramble and make plays with your feet. That's not something that we've seen from the quarterback this season, but – to his credit, I think Mark did what we expected him to do, which is make some nice passes down the field. He did, and a couple standouts at the receiver position. Yeah, you're pointing at uh, Cole Seslar with four catches and some big-time yardage for, for him, 113 on the afternoon. Uh, nice job by him. Yeah. <laughs> Sessler's been really good. Uh, Sessler, one guy that did not cough up the football today, he held on to it and Oh, you think they some, heard that through your microphone? Able to make some nice plays. And, uh, <laughs> oh, no, I, I was just describing Sessler's there's game. A, there's I don't know a what cough you're button about. here. I hit it. I got to hit mine, too, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. You just have a, a moment of silence for, for your – For uh, me to cough. For your <laughs> cold. It's that time of year. Yeah, um, it is. Anyways, Cole Sessler <laughs> uh, made some nice plays. The senior wide receiver in his second-to-last home game uh, came to play. I think this was a, a season high for him. Made just four catches, but they were for 113 yards, so he was a deep threat, a la Ben Koloski, what we saw early on this season. Sessler fills that void, and Keontae Townsend, 66 yards receiving, and a touchdown, Elijah Juan Paris, seven catches, 65 yards, and one touchdown. I think Paris, their most consistent receiver. We turn things over to Tyler Poyer. I think we would have seen a lot more of TP had uh, the Bulldogs not been trailing going into that second half. They were kind of their hand was forced to throw the football. Poyer was great. 26 carries, 100 yards. Good for 3.6 a carry and got in the end zone. So he was great. Looking at the defense now, uh, Riker Bidwell, he always puts up a ton of tackles. Uh, this week was no different. He had 14 tackles. And I'm interested to see what his numbers are on the year because it seems like he's had an incredible, incredible amount of tackles. Total is 79 on the season, plus the 14 he had today. That puts him to 93 tackles on the year for Bidwell, who is uh, – he's just a sophomore. So we were talking about who was going to replace Kyle Minder, who graduated last year. Mm -hmm. I think the exciting thing for this Adrian team is you've got some real young guys that are making some real heady plays. And, yeah, they make mistakes. They, they're they going to do that. They're young. But they're improving. I think we're looking at next year maybe a wagon of a football team. Yeah, you, you talk about the youth and the pieces, right? Uh, what is this? What is this team going to retain for next year? Uh, who who can we count on at the next level if this team wants to compete for championships? You know, next year and the years ahead, uh, it's a guy like Riker Bidwell, and there's a couple other freshmen and, and sophomores. Bidwell being the sophomore uh, that that are out there making plays, getting significant minutes, and they have film. So they can self-scout, right? Help with the coaches to, to get them into the right spots to make these kind of plays. I think uh, we, we saw another breakout performance by wide receiver Elijah on Paris. Big for him to get into the end zone. Um, but, yeah, th there are pieces. But if you have pieces and you have a puzzle, you still have to put them together. 
and um, they have two more games this year to figure it out. Alma comes to town next week. Will not get any easier as the Scots come in rolling. We're going to select our player of the game, but before we do that, we're going to take a 30-second timeout. Adrian drops this one at home, 34-21 to to Albion. You're tuned in to Bulldog Football on the Adrian College Sports Network. The Adrian College Media Production House provides opportunities for students to learn and grow live on the airwaves, just like Matt Kibbe. I've gotten a chance to create a relationship with coaches and teams and learn more from people instead of trying to teach myself something. I've gotten an opportunity to expand my knowledge of sports, hone in on my skills as a broadcaster, learn about equipment in different ways. You get, a, you get more of a connection with professors as well. Providing opportunities, growing leadership. The Adrian College Media Production House. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome back to the post-game show here at Docking Family Stadium. Ian Wentz and Calvin Keyes as we continue our post-game coverage. It's now time for our selection of the player of the game this afternoon. We're going with the Bulldog. That's obvious. Calvin, who are we going with this afternoon? I'm going to go with the senior receiver, Cole Sessler. Looking at his stats from today, number two had four catches, but they were for 113 yards, did not get in the end zone, but he averaged 28.3 yards per catch, uh, season-long 46-yard reception. And this was really a super strong performance for Sessler. Came into this game, he only had 10 catches for 142 yards. He nearly matches that number this afternoon. In the absence of some guys like Ben Koloski and, you know, Tyler Poirier playing running back, so he wasn't really a receiving option, Sessler came up big. Lots of guys you could talk about. Tyler Poirier, good game on the ground. Lopez completed a lot of big passes. Riker Bidwell on the defensive side made some nice plays, racking up 14 tackles. And then you look at the sack statistics. Randall Broom had the only sack, and he actually made some nice – plays to stop the run all around some guys you could talk about but I think Cole Sessler stands out to me all right congratulations to Cole for our player of the game this afternoon we'll be back with our final thoughts on this one and a look ahead to next week we will take a 60 second break we'll be back with our post game show as it continues here on the Adrian College Sports Network Ian Went, Calvin Keyes post game here. Our final look down at Docking Family Stadium here this afternoon. Albion, they take down the Bulldogs, 34 to 21. And uh, I, you know, Coach Harry Bailey in the interim position, first game on the sideline. You know, uh, when you talked to him earlier this week, it, you know, it's been a dream of his to to be the head coach, and here he is. He's an Adrian alum. He's a local guy. Um, you know, I'd like to get down and you know talk to, to coach and, and get his thoughts on the game. You know, Albion comes to town. They're a good football team. It's a rival, all that built in. And you know, I'd say he, he did a solid job in terms of coaching and, and getting his guys to rally around themselves in the locker room, right? Being down 21 nothing, You're looking down and out. You come out third quarter and play really well, and you, you give Albion a, a pretty close game. Yeah, I thought from a coaching standpoint, he did everything he could to help his team win. It's just a matter of a little more execution. Uh, and, yeah, Bailey tried to pull out all the stops. Bulldogs gave the Britons a fight. But in the end, 
in the battle of the A's, Adrian came out as <laughs> Team B. Yeah. Oh, wow. Gosh, another one right at the end. That's tell you what. Week by week, we see improvement here in this broadcast booth. Thank you. With, with statements like that, From that's you a, that's a nice job. I appreciate um, it. You know, Bulldogs. You know <laughs> We'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the fact that Albion College is going to head back, or actually, they'll be playing on the road again next week against Olivet College, and then. For their final game against Alma, they will play at Sprankle Sprandle Stadium. I wanted to say that at least once during the broadcast. All right. Well, we, we, we Sprankle checked. Sprankle another W in the win column, Ian. We, uh, we <laughs> checked off all the boxes. Bulldogs dropped this one by 13. Alma to come to town for senior day. 5 o'clock kickoff here at Docking Family Stadium. All right. For everyone that helped make this broadcast possible, from the cameras to the engineering studio, big thanks to... Laura Witkowski, Reagan Petrowski. Both the skis. The skis. Um, all all the the employees working camera today. I forgot all the names. Calvin, who they have running camera? Connor Shelb, Gino Capiccioni, and then we got uh, Forrest Vernier, who was up top doing his first football game. I thought he did a great oh, job yeah, with the top Oh, it was his camp. first game? Well, good for yeah. him. Yeah, so he did awesome. Obviously, Megan Abbey, our executive producer, and yeah. Calvin the, Keys, Ian Wentz. Yeah, all, all the thank yous. And thanks for tuning in. What do you say we do it again uh, same time two weeks from now? You'll, you'll be on your own for next week. Calvin's bye week is next week. <laughs> Final score from Adrian. It's Albion 34, Adrian 21. You've been tuned in to Adrian College Bulldog Football on the Adrian College Sports Network.
continue to take pride and learn from Asa Mahan's leadership today.